Uh, we are live. Today is November 23rd, 2015, and we have our Reiki, Galactic Reiki and Osu Reiki Level 2 Part B. And Jim will have the first two hours, and then I will have the second two hours. And in between, we'll have uh, joint attunement. So I will see you at uh, 1.50 your time, uh, Eastern time. Okay, very good. Let's start with a prayer of uh, unification and for learning and for our highest good. And I'm just going to say one right now. So, dear Mother, Father, God, we just thank you so much for all you do for us, for the things that we have that even we take for granted we just love you and thank you and praise you for the good in us. I know that sometimes there it seems like you're not there and there's so much troubles in the world, but we know that you're there and there's a reason for everything. We ask that you be with all those that are here today and bring them great understanding and learning and energy for healing because healing energy is so beautiful wonderful and positive and can actually open up someone to the greater powers of the universe we just thank you so much and praise you always amen okay hello everybody today um, I'm going to be going over all the different uh, symbols with you again and I'm going to go right down the line and ask everybody how they're doing with the symbols because these are really, really important for Reiki 2. This is the main point of Reiki 2. It brings you into a practitioner frame of mind, which means that you're able to, to uh, control the power of healing that you're using in some way. The Choku Ray, put the, put the energy here or put the energy all over the person. You can put the energy in one particular spot, too. Remember that choku re means put the energy here. And if you're working on the neck or the back or the legs, you can put the energy just there. However, if you want to put the energy on the whole body, you can do choku re and put it on the whole body as well. Now, um, then you have the seheiki. The seheiki is basically used for putting, uh, for using with emotional th um, problems. If somebody's not feeling well, uh, emotionally, heartbroken, feeling sad, grieved, whatever it is that is emotionally wrong with them. Also, if there is some pains or afflictions that have been caused by emotions. Many times people will bring in emotions into their bodies and not release them and it causes illness or pain or just plain um, aggravation and they don't know what's happening so Seheiki is very helpful for removing these kinds of problems now the Honshou Zeishonen is a long distance healing tool you can use it you can uh, do the do the symbol of Honshou Zeishonen and be able to send out energy to different parts of the world or the city or the room or whatever it is wherever you are and you're sending it and they're not actually working on the person this is the kind of energy you would send the Han Shao Zhe Shonen they don't have to be a hundred miles away for you to do Han Shao Zhe Shonen they can be right across the room or within five feet and and maybe they are not understanding that they need Reiki but if their body accepts what you are sending to if their subconscious accepts it then you can do some healing on them usually I would prefer and it is more right to ask the person if you can use Reiki on them it is the most proper way to do it of course not everywhere and ev not every time you use Reiki there will be a permission except by the subconscious of the other person. Now there are times when um, this has happened where somebody passes out in a crowd or somebody is having a heart attack or whatever and if you rush over and start giving them Reiki because they cannot give their permission at that time 
I am sure their body will accept the healing energy that you are giving. Does that make sense to you? Also, Hansha Zeshonen is the Christ in me or the, the spirit in me or whatever, uh, whatever you choose, whatever deity you choose, that deity that is within you will meet the deity within them bringing you closer together spiritually. So Han Shao Zhe Shonen is not only for long distance healing, but also for to blend your spirits in, in a greater way. There, there are times when you are working on people that you may feel that they are drifting away or that you're not making the connection that you should be making. And so therefore the Han Shao Zhe Shonen uh, will be right there for you and help you connect with that with their spirits again help you connect with uh, the healing properties that are taking place again so has everybody memorized their uh, symbols yes yes I are have. you able to do them without looking at the page yes are yes. there any ones that give you a greater deal of problem than the other of course, the Han Shao Zhe Shonen is a very yeah. large symbol. The, the, the and, yeah. and you have to be observant because I am not there with you to look at. I, in an ideal situation, I would want you to draw each of these symbols for me, and I will be looking over your shoulder, seeing exactly what motions you are using to do these particular symbols. The fact that they turn out to look like the symbols is fantastic and is uh, the message in itself but some people feel that the actual way that you create the symbols has a lot of energy too because that was the intent of the person that created them to use the symbols in this flowing manner to use the symbols correctly mm. does anybody have a question about that I know the Han Shao Zhe Shonen is very difficult for uh, for the first few times, and you have to look at it in a way. Now, see, I'm going to show you something. This is a picture of Han Shao Zhe Shonen. Can you see that? Wait, I'm not on the screen. Here we go. Uh, let me see if you can see it. Yeah, I we. Know can it. it shows all the actions. Can you see all that? Yes. Yeah. It shows the actions of the writer. It does in the, your book as well, I believe. I was yeah. looking in there. I think it did. But if you are using those actions and putting the symbols exactly where they should be, um, it's wonderful. Now, I have to say, some people, I know that some uh, teachers, that they have these symbols, the exact same symbol, except they, it's not exactly the same. There's slight differences in it. Now, your intent is the most important thing. So that, if there's a slight difference in a symbol, please don't get all uptight about that because the the spirits know what you're doing and how you're going to use this symbol. However, it is best for them to understand to do it the most correctly that you can do it. It shows respect for the art of healing and it shows respect for uh, those trying to read the symbols it shows respect to the spirits so does everyone understand that yes it's a matter of respect yeah. really to, to get the symbols correct okay now choker ray is probably the easiest of them to do don't you think but yeah. make sure Make sure that when you're doing the choku ray, it has that little flat part on the bottom so that you can bring the, the curly cues around so that they'll be full. Because if you come down like this and start immediately doing the curly cue, see what happens? It's, it's not, not as good. You have to have that little space at the bottom so it comes around in a full circle. Okay. Does everybody know what I'm talking about? Yep. Yes. Okay. Yes. Because I have a, This is a tense che on the board behind me. It looks a little like. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. It looks. It looks very much like a choku ray. 
without the top part on it. However, it's drawn differently. And it's all, you can draw it similarly, but it is there is different uses for it. So it can be drawn several different ways. And we'll go over that in a little bit. But first of all, uh, is there any questions about the symbols that you have? I have them all right here. I have the... Did anybody have trouble with the Seheki? I didn't have any trouble with that one. Uh, remember... Yeah, that was easy enough. The thing is, remember, it shows you how to start. Remember always to move left. With what finger? Middle finger. Middle, middle, middle finger. finger. Middle yeah. finger is your drawing finger. If you're going to draw something on somebody, if you're going to draw something in the air, use the middle finger. It doesn't look bad when you point it out this direction. And the other fingers are still good. You know, hi. But um, you can draw those symbols and... It's, it is the finger of energy in the, in the hand because it's centralized, of course. So, therefore, are there any questions yet? All righty, um, very good. I, I'm sad that not everybody's here. But, and also, you didn't have to memorize this one, but oh, grab your own paper. You didn't have to memorize this one, but it is important if you're going to do deep healing, if you're going to do bone healing. So that's the one Takur has shown us for deep healing. I'm, before is I move that on to... clockwise or counterclockwise, Jim? It's the same as the Chokure. It goes counterclockwise. It goes counterclockwise, so okay. very good. You you can come in. We're not talking. Um, but I'm gonna go over a couple other symbols too, so that we can. Um, I'm gonna go uh, talk to you about the tinch J back here, the one that I have on the board. Mm -hmm. It does look like the Choku Ray without the top part, the uh, introduction part. It seems, but it is. Not the same symbol. This is a more galactic symbol. It's a, a symbol that has been uh, used for many centuries and is written, done differently. Let me show you. Has anyone ever seen it before? No. Nope. No. Okay. This symbol starts in the middle and comes out around. That's the, and then up. Now, why is that? Because that is a conductor, uh, that is a bringing Earth energy up or energy of the planet up. You start in the middle and bring the energy up. Do you understand that? And this is the energy of the Earth or the planet that you're on will have its own energy and this will bring the energy up if you use it this way. Now, you can use it as coming around this way and then I put a line down through that is bringing energy from the universe or from the, a higher place you start down here move it around and then put the line in fine last do you understand that can you repeat that, is, that? That's two yes so if you it come from the center it brings the energy from the earth and then the line extends it through the universe? Yes, when you do this, it's bringing energy up from the bottom. See that? You're, uh -huh. you're making the vortex and bringing it up. Do you understand that? Yes. Now, for bringing down through the universe is coming around this way and then putting a line down in through the middle, connecting all the, all the lines. So on the first that one, that is through. one movement, and on the second one, it is two movements. Correct. Okay. Now, there's other movements with Jim, the J. Jim, other, yes. The, with the line, do you go up or do you come down? The second one comes down. The first one comes up. 
you see the first one comes around and up. The second one comes around and then down. Oh, so there's two in one. Correct. Actually, there's. Uh, you can make this symbol in four different ways. But he said he went attuning you to these two, bringing energy from the universe and bringing energy from the soil, the ground, the earth, the center of the planet. So these, this comes around. It starts in the middle. This is the first one. Starts in the middle and comes around and then goes up. Okay. That is the one pulling energy up from the, the ground, from Mother Earth, from the planet that you're on. And this one starts down here and goes around to the center, and then put, you draw a line down through. From the top to the bottom. Yes, from the top to the bottom. So okay. the first line goes from the bottom to the top. The second line goes from the top to the bottom. And that one is bringing energy from the earth, one is bringing energy from the universe. So you have to be attuned to use this symbol. And so Ish will do that later. But is there any more questions about that? Yes. What's, what's the use for this yes. symbol precisely? It, bringing energy in. Uh, first of all, bringing energy in from the earth, just like when, when you're doing grounding, it's more of a, the first part is a grounding sort of an energy. The second is uh, bringing energy from the universe. So if you need grounding, the tinch che from the center to the bottom and then up is the grounding part of it. And the tinch che from the bottom to the middle and then the line going down is the energy from the universe. Now you may want to use both of them. They're both conductors of energy. And it, there's other ways to conduct energy with this symbol. He said there's two other ways to draw it. So I, I was like, okay, I don't know what other ways you could possibly draw it, but he said there was, and he will show us later, but he wanted to show those two aspects of it first. So, you know how the first one is for helping grounding? Yes. What is the second one for helping? Is that bring energy more from to, the universe for, to bring energy from the universe if you need greater... Like your energy. top chakras or... Yes. It, it's actually with intention, whatever you want to bring it in from the universe for. Sometimes people want to do both of them so they can meet at their heart chakra because that creates a new energy altogether. So... You can do one and then the other, and then they meet in the heart chakra. Okay. But like I said, it, there's no energy with it until you do the attunement that goes for it. Then there's energy for all, all, all parts of it, which we'll do a little bit later. All right, is there any questions about any of the symbols? Because I want to talk. Oh, would you recommend doing both in in each session? Um, my, oh, that's a good question. Um, I would think that if you saw somebody that was you felt was not very grounded, I would do the grounding one because it's a very strong grounding um, tool. It brings a lot of energy up from the earth or from, mm -hmm. from the planet's uh, soil. And that, if you see somebody that is not uh, grounding very well, then that would be a great one to use for them. If you see somebody that is too grounded or somebody that is not accepting of some things, unaccepting of anything fourth dimensional, then the other symbol would tend to bring more fourth dimensional energy down or energies from higher levels. Does that make sense to you? So you can use them both on anyone, especially to balance them. If you feel that somebody's unbalanced and you're not sure which element they need, you can balance them by doing both of them. How's that sound? So I have a question for you. When you're doing Reiki and you're preparing to work with a client, do you yeah. go through all three of the regular symbols plus 
the galactic symbols. Well, okay. Um, yes. It, if they need a certain thing from the regular symbols, I do do them. But I use mostly the uh, Reiki 3 symbols because they're, I'm attuned to the higher symbols as well. Mm -hmm. So I use the Daikomio and the Tibetan type, the Asui Daikomio and the Tibetan Daikomio a lot more. But I still do use Choku Rei and Seiheiki and Hansha Zeishonen whenever necessary. Okay. Daikomio and the Tibetan Daikomio are take the place of all these other symbols, but if you need extra strength in one of these areas, absolutely you can use any of the symbols that you feel necessary to get the healing done. Okay. What other questions? I, I sense that there's another question out there. Jim, for, yes. for the one that, that Takur gave you, is there a name for that one? She, uh, there is, we can't, it's it's a long name, and she just said it's a deep healing uh, Choco Ray. So a deep healing Choco Ray is what we call okay. it. Okay. Um, uh, there is a name, I have, I, she did tell it to me, and I really don't remember it, to be honest with you. But it is a long, like, one of those Lyran, long Lyran names, and I can't remember it. But if you really want to know, I'll ask her, and I'll give it to you. So, if you would like to use the proper name for it. Um, any other questions? Yeah, what is the name of the one that we just learned? This is the Tinch Che. You see the writing up there? Can you see no, it? No, I can't read it. It's T-I-N-C-H-C-H-E. Tinch Che. Thank you. You're welcome. One moment, please. Hey, Alan, do you want to go sit on the couch? I will move this out for you so you yes. can get in there. My my uh, victim for Reiki is here, so uh, we'll do that in a little bit. But I want to go through all the symbols again and make sure. Is anybody unsure of anything about the symbols? Because I want to make sure. You see, this is a very, very, I, I can't stress that enough. If you do the symbols correctly, I'm going to show them all to you once again. Oh, here, I put them all on a pile. Um, the Shokure. I think everybody can get that one pretty easily. Can anybody tell me what Shokure does? Uh, it's a yeah, power symbol. symbol. Yes, but what what is the actual, what does it do? What is, when you use Shokure, you're saying what? You're put activating. Energy. You're saying put the energy here or Focus put the power the energy yeah. everywhere. Focus the power of the universe in a single point in space and time. Yes, many people use that uh, that uh, definition also. My, you can put as much of the uh, energy from the universe in there as you possibly can. So when you're saying Chokure, this is put the energy here, or put the energy everywhere, or bring the power of the universe down to our level so that we can use it. Mm. It feels like a 3D vortex. I, I see the symbols in a 3D sense. Yes, it is a vortex. A lot of these, a lot of these symbols, a lot of the different species and different uh, people use vortexes to bring in their energy. It works quite well with the circular motion. Now you understand that uh, whenever you're uh, spinning the chakras, you go clockwise. Why would you go clockwise? Does anybody know? When you're spinning somebody's or brightening chakras. Feminine energy. Pardon me? Feminine energy. Bringing okay. in the energy. It, it, Okay, uh, partially right. Um, when you're spinning clockwise, you're putting energy in. You're putting energy in. Now, the Choku rays are just in, they're intention based, and so it doesn't, they don't, it doesn't matter if you're, 
it just you just have to do the symbol the way it was written. However, when you're spinning chakras, you spin them clockwise so that they brighten and you put in the color of the energy, you put the energies of the universe in there. Now, if you spin a chakra counterclockwise, what what, what is that doing? Taking and into my that. In my experience, I, I was going to ask you about that because I do often, even with the pendulum, like clear and remove gunk. Exactly. It's a removal. Out if you go counterclockwise to clear and remove things that are blocking and then you fill it back in with the clock. With, with the clockwise. Okay, that's very important. Listen to that. The counterclockwise removes anything that shouldn't be there. If you feel that there's something in the chakra that does not belong there, then I would do a counterclockwise and pull that energy out that does not belong there. But after you're done with that, you must seal it back up by putting in the energy that is necessary to heal that area. Does that make sense to you? Yes. You can't I, pull something out and leave a hole. Right. You don't, do that. you don't want to leave a hole in somebody's chakra by mm -hmm. pulling out a, some stuff that doesn't belong there and not putting something good back. Right. You need to so, fill the hole with the positive energy. Any mm -hmm. questions on that? So I have a question. I do have a question about that. So, you know, talking to Alma Talk and she was saying, he, she, was saying <laughs> that use golden light like particles of metallic as opposed to white light when you ground and stuff like that and I had right. always used white light and she has said that because the gold reflects the dark back to itself as opposed to white which is shiny which attracts dark so my question is since I always learned white light before I ever heard that. So um, now I'm in white light surrounded by gold light. Am I making, is there anything wrong with just white light? <laughs> no, I'll tell you what, it's about intention. Uh, the white light has, was the very beginning. What is, she, what is, uh, what Alvin Talk is saying is that the energies have changed in the last six months and there, it's better to use gold and silver. Why? Because these are earth elements and that's the changes that have happened are within the earth energy so being using earth elements probably gives you more energy at this point and the white light there's nothing wrong with the white light it's from higher dimensional sources so therefore your intention is what what matters the most but uh, there what he's doing I'm talk is doing is guiding you toward a more useful use of the colors we call gold and silver are elements of the earth and so therefore since the energy has changed gold and silver are more powerful in this working but white light also works white light works. just as uh, I mean with your intents it works very well and Jim I have a question from Douglas on the on Skype I yes. want to know if you activate the tinch che with the choker ray, and I said, well, you will get an attunement for the tin che. Correct. He says, yes, but do you sandwich the tin che with the choker ray like the manual, like it shows in the manual? Oh, the manual doesn't have the tinch che in it. The tinch che is separate from the choker ray. So the tinch che, you can use them together, I wouldn't, uh, because, but they're drawn differently. So you, you have to draw the choku ray and have it work as the choku ray, and then you can add the tinch che to it to add energy or grounding or whatever energy you do with it. But they don't, they're not one on top of the other. They're actually two different symbols drawn two different ways. But the tinch che is galactic. And Correct. From, but is it a galactic symbol, but who is it from... That or was is it just like a universal? No, Ish is the one that brought us that okay. one. Where is Ish from? Ish is from, I know the name of the planet, I just can't remember it right now. Ishka is Ish, Ishka, something like that. Ishka. 
Yeah, but Ish is a serious light being. He's a serious. Okay, serious. Okay. And he is a actually ascended master from his planet. So okay, very cool. Do other right. ones have any questions? Oh, any of the other participants? Do you have any questions? Are you understanding everything that Jim is saying? Uh, yeah, yeah, I got everything. Up. Please. Okay. Yes, please I, make I sure that you do because there is one. Yeah. Sorry, oh, uh, for the deep healing shokurai that uh, Takuri gave you, yes. you start that the same way as the shokurai at the top? Yeah. It's it's okay. exactly the same as the shokurai, except you go around 12 times instead of three. Okay. Have you, have you ever used the deep healing one in reverse? Um, no, I haven't. Okay. Uh, but I'm, I will, I'll have to ask about that to see if there is a difference. You mean a different in reverse or yeah, like the, the other side? The deep, the deep healing choku ray, but starting in the middle at like uh, how did you say uh, counterclockwise? Clockwise. For for like say if you really needed to get something out that was like really stuck in there or whatever. Well, that would probably work with your intention. You right. see, okay. these symbols were made um, or created because of the energy that they have. Now, when you add an intention to the energy, it changes the energy a little bit. If you're just using it generically, it's just creating a vortex for that kind of energy, grounding energy or, or, or whatever. But if you put an intent on it, that does add energy to it because it brings in another, another uh, element to it. Do you understand that? Yes, and I do. Thank our you. intent for using healing power is very strong and it is something that is wonderful. The intent behind your healing is great. So now, I want to go back, that reminds me of something. Whenever you're preparing your clients for Reiki, make sure you make them feel comfortable. I've, I've gone over that a few times, but now that you're at a practitioner level, you should also you know, be very, very aware that this is your business. This is uh, uh, making the com uh, giving the uh, patient comfort so they can heal. So it is important that your your patient is very comfortable because if they're not comfortable, they're not going to heal well. They're going to be they're not going to be concentrating on the healing. They're going to be concentrating on their discomfort. So you don't want anybody to be laying there on the bed thinking, oh, my back is hurting, when they should be thinking, oh, this is, let us combine our energies and help us heal together. So um, that's very important. Can anybody tell me how they, give me an example of how they would prepare their customer or client or patient? If they were just someone you never met before coming into your office or home to get a Reiki treatment, what would you do first? First, I would personally um, is just to talk them through what I would be doing, what the process would be, make them feel comfortable and relaxed, make them feel that they are in a space and environment where they can just let go of that, and just ask them if they are willing to receive the treatment and the energy. That, for me, is key. If they're not willing to receive it, there's not a lot I can do. Exactly. This is excellent, uh, an excellent start because it's going to make them feel like, oh, okay, I'm, I'm with somebody safe. Well, if I would also do one more thing. I'd say, do you have any questions for me? And many times people have a barrage of questions like, what's your background? Where did you learn to do this? How... How effective has it been on other people? Things of this nature. And you can answer these questions for them to make them feel more calm and make them feel more secure. Because there is nothing to hide with Reiki. It does never do anything bad because your intentions are always for healing. Your intentions are always for creating a safe place and a good, a good healing um uh, atmosphere, if we want to put it that way. Any other questions? How would someone else do it? I'd like to hear from someone else. Because everybody... Well, first, first, first we have to go to the right mindset. 
Absolutely. Thank you very much. You have to go into us healing with the right mindset. You can't be all grouchy and unhappy. It's not like going into a regular job. This is you're dealing with somebody's healing. What else do you, are you going to say about that? Then you do a meditation, do a meditation. And, and an intention to resolve the vibration. Yes. Before they even arrive. Before this class even started, before every any any uh, channel session is ever done, there should be some sort of meditation and prayer and getting yourself acclimated to the the to healing yourself acclimated to what's going to happen and 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 then you can greet your customer, patient, client in a way that is. Uh, grounded and beautiful and that they can feel your energy has been uh, worked on a little bit you know you've straightened yourself out because sometimes you wake up in the morning your back hurts your leg hurts your this and that and the other thing and what do you do you you go into a little meditation and get yourself out of some of these aches and pains or at least put your mind in a positive frame so that it's not being carried through to the client, customer, patient. So um, it is a good thing to prepare yourself first. Any other questions about that? I was just going to add that if I go um, to somebody's house to do it for them yes. there, I try to bring um, my smudge stick with me and um, smudge the home first so that the energy is cleared from that area as well before Very starting. Very good. Make sure you have permission to do that. Some people might be offended by the, yeah, the yeah, fact yeah. that you're going to smudge their home because, they, hey, there's nothing wrong with my house. But if you t just on the other hand, you can smudge with the power some just the right choku ray. Yes, whatever it, you feel it, it more clears the same thing. Yeah, if you feel comfortable with that. But if you are going to smudge their house, you just let them know ahead of time. This is just to take out anything that might interfere with the healing. What yeah, about... I did, I did do that. I did let them know ahead of time that I would prefer to do that when I'm going into their home. Excellent. Now, if they have a problem with that, then you have to work without it or do it some other way. Um, um, Simon is asking a question, Jim. Yes. He said, if I'm healing someone and I want to put in some of the other symbols, such as the fire dragon, or the John Ray, do I need to put them in a particular spot of the Reiki sandwich? No. You, when you are doing a Reiki healing, you, when you prepare to do a Reiki healing, you have already asked the spirits to help you, to guide you, to do whatever it is that you need to do for the best healing possible. If it comes into your mind that you need to do a different symbol at this time, if you need to add energy by using a certain symbol, then you go ahead and do it because it's already been, uh, you've already asked permission to do this beforehand. Does that make sense to you? Because they're going to work these symbols together so that the healing can be the most optimal possible. That is, if you are in the right healing frame of mind and you are serious about your work, the, the symbols that you need will come to you. Okay, he's listening. He said, okay. So, yes, you can insert a symbol at any time if it is appropriate for the healing. <coughs> any you, other questions? Well, do you, when you have a client come over, um not engage in what's going on with you, what would you, like, you know, kind um, of if it's have a friend, a... If somebody is a friend that's coming over for a Reiki healing, of course you're going to have a uh, pleasant conversation. and. I mean, that's... just like, what do you think is going on with you? Is there anything particular that's coming to mind that you would, like, yeah, okay. healing for? Yeah. I mean, my practitioners do that for me, so I don't know what you do. Absolutely. If that's what's coming to you in your thought processes when you're dealing with your customer when they come in, 
then absolutely that is something that you should be talking about, sharing with, etc. You see, your praying, your meditation beforehand is to ask that this go exactly the way it should go and that the customer, client, patient be as relaxed and comfortable as possible. And sometimes those kinds of things are just what people need to get relaxed and comfortable. Okay. But not as, like as far as you're concerned, when you have a client come in, it's kind of like, I already know what I'm doing. You lay down, and we just do it. Is that yes, kind of how you do it? If, but if it's someone brand new, I'll ask some questions. I'll ask you if they're hurting in different places. I'll ask them how they're, you know, I'll do the plus. I really want to know how they're feeling at that time so that we can work on that getting them into the most comfortable places possible. Because very small questions like, how are you today? How are you feeling? Uh, what hurts? Where, um, you know, things of that nature can put a whole new perspective on this client, customer, patient as, as, they, as you work with them. And th sometimes they will speak to you as you're working with them and saying, they'll say, I feel this or I feel that and you can explain to them what they're feeling and many times if it's a new customer I will tell them that they may feel this or that. Oh, I have another idea um, about uh, when you have someone just coming in in the first couple of minutes especially if they're they don't know a lot about Reiki uh, regarding aches and pains or how they're doing what yes. I would probably do uh, because I like for example at work every day we have our our meeting and they ask me to lead the stretches before we start our shift in the kitchen and so I just kinda of say okay everybody roll your neck around you know roll your shoulders probably just maybe some things like that just so they could get attuned to their body and feel like, oh well, I have a pain here now that you mention it that kinda of thing um, not like you know jumping jacks and push-ups but maybe just like a minute just sort of move around a little bit while I'm asking them questions so then that gives them something to do instead of just like sitting there and listening to me talk excellent idea because that gets them interactive with you already that puts them in a place where they know that they're involved in this as well I like that very much thanks good I like that a lot. If that is something that you would like to fit into your uh, style, because everybody has a style of Reiki. Everybody has a way that they do it best. My way may not be the best way for you, and etc., but it is comfortable for me, and it makes my people that I'm working on feel comfortable. And so that is why I do it the way I do it. And if that makes you feel comfortable, if that makes your clients feel comfortable, absolutely do it that way nice. okay. anybody else want to tell me how they would any any other preparations for Reiki I want to share one that my um, my Reiki 2 teacher taught me and it is such a little thing but it is so amazing <laughs> when you have your client laying down and you have them get comfortable. Sometimes they need a bolster under their knee if they have a bad back, let's say, or yes. you know, under their head. You want to get them all comfortable. And the smallest thing is go down to the, their feet and pull their pants down, the pant legs down, to just smooth out the pants. And for some reason, that is like such a little luxury. And such a comfortable, like, set way to just like get them prepared to be completely well, comfortable. What happens is when they're getting on the bed, their clothing bunches up sometimes, and that's a wonderful thing to do. It's not like you're being inappropriate; you're just helping them to be more comfortable. Excellent, very nice. You mm -hmm. know how your clothes ball up when you sometimes get on a bed that's too high or too low or whatever. If it's not just the right size, you end up with your clothing balled up underneath you or whatever. So, yes, make sure that, that that's taken care of. You can Maybe. ask them about that. And, yeah, just go down and just yank so that the pants are not all scrunched up under, underneath them. That's nice. Just let I them know. It's nice to say, James. 
Yeah, so to say, are you comfortable, and are you comfortable in your clothing too? Do you need me to adjust anything? And right. having that level of care, and that level of detail, will really make the customer feel a lot more relaxed, a lot more, um, you know, concerned and taken care of. That's nice. I, I, excellent. I, I love. It's the not an intrusive kind of action, and so like. A couple of Reiki master teachers that I've worked with, well, several, they all do the same thing. They don't ask because clients not, may not necessarily understand they're not comfortable. But it's like, I mean, you grab the end of the pants and you just kind of pull it down yep. to smooth it out. Yep, that's it, fine. It's a very small thing, but it's like magic yeah. also. <laughs> Maybe not be important to ask first though, because if someone thinks you're playing around with their clothes and they're not used to it, um, isn't wouldn't just asking of it be a polite thing? Use your own style. Whatever you think. If you know that the customer would not be uncomfortable, you can do that. But use the use your own thought processes on this because you know that your thought process is important in this. It, you're involving your customer, client, patient into this whole, this whole action, and so therefore it makes it, it's important that you, you, that you be exactly who you are, be very real, be very authentic, and uh, use your own style with them because this is going to help them relax in the sense that if they, if they relate to you very well, you're going to have a customer for life. You know. I was going to say that I like to um, integrate a couple other things with mine. Make sure first that, that there's no allergies, and um, I like to use essential oils. And like okay. you said, with the foot massage, I know a little bit about reflexology too. Yeah. So um, applying some of that along with the essential oils, like lavender to relax. Um, in the massage oil is really a nice touch. If if there's no allergies, then make sure to ask that. Wonderful. And that's yeah, Valerie, I did the same thing too. It it was nice, and I, I did what you said too, Jim. I asked um, what type of music they liked, and I like put on something calming, or even asked if they liked calming music at all. And yes. Then um, did the same with asking about the type of scents they liked for essential oils, and then um, it really set a ni nice atmosphere. Excellent. You see that that's taking the initiative to make the customer, client, patient feel better. You know what I mean? I'm also, also kind there of are many people. I'm glad you brought up these different oils and things because there are some people that actually use stones and crystals along with their healing work as well. There is nothing wrong with that. Some people feel very comfortable and know what stones and crystals heal what parts of the body and are effective on what parts of the body, etc. So if you have that knowledge, you can use crystals and stones as well. And and uh, I know my friend, uh, uh, her, uh, what is his name, Ricky Herman, he uses about 10 or 12 different stones all over the body, and it seems to really work, and people are very... Uh, People are relaxed by the stones in, in some cases. He puts a relaxing Reiki on the stones, the intention in the stones, and they're very helpful. So, yes, you I've can use other, yeah. other things other than just Reiki to help you with your healing if you know how to use them properly. And that is a very big key. You have to know how to use them properly. You just can't throw a bunch of stones on somebody and expect it to be effective. You have to know what stones are healing for what and why the colors, you know, the green color for the heart, the red for the base, chakra, the groundy, all kinds of different things. And there are certain st stones that do certain healing work and other stones do different healing work. So yes. you don't want to put yes. one stone in a place where it wouldn't be effective. So that's all. And what do you think about um, adding like the warm stones like they use for massages somewhat, but just having them there for the relaxation of the warmth. If your customer likes that, absolutely. I would ask them if that if that's something that they like and if it is, use it. Anything so really to you could do the stuff. whole yeah. you could do kind of like a whole spa experience with this and leave the person really feeling refreshed, relaxed, healed, yeah. the whole thing. Well, you see. 
the more special they feel, the greater the healing as well, don't you think? Yes, if exactly. If you make them feel special, if you make them feel that this is very important, which it is, absolutely, um, the more important that this that you try to make them feel comfortable and put them in a healing place, the greater the healing will be, they will understand that they they are being treated with uh, special gifts and hands and energies. So uh, that is a wonderful thing. Yes, I like it. All right, I have a couple little more things, unless there's more comments there. We're, we're running a little late. <laughs> Are you okay? Oh, okay. Okay. Um, I'd like to talk about a couple other things that the practitioners should know. Uh, one of those things is um, aura cleaning. Has anybody ever done aura cleaning? Or cleansing? Or clearing? It has many aura clearing, cleansing, cleaning. Um, the aura is that which is outside of the body, the outside of the person, not not actually part of the body, but it is around the body. It's an energy field that is seven layers deep around the body. And for in practitioner work, before you leave your customer, it is good to do an oral cleaning. After you are done doing the healing and some people do it first, so that the, the aura is cleansed before the uh, Reiki is done. And some people do it afterwards, because they do it afterwards before, so that when all the toxins come out of the body that are were used in the Reiki, you can get rid of them out of the aura by doing an aura cleansing. Now, some people clean the uh, do it before, because some people come in with dirty auras, and they need cleansed out right away. So use your own intuitive thought process. Sometimes people will need it both before and after. They come in dirty and they a lot of things come out, so you'll get rid of those toxins as well. So but first of all, when you're heal after the healing, I, I'm gonna talk about it as an afterwards thing, because when you do it afterwards, you get all of it anyway if you know what I mean. So, uh, ask them to close, make sure their eyes are closed, make sure that they're comfortable, of course. Um, but feel their body, uh, move your hands over their body, over their head, over their body, and feel the energy that is in the aura. Because you will be able to feel, not only when you touch them, energies going in, but you'll be able to feel their aura and how much energy that it takes in. Now, smoothing out the aura is one thing. Cleansing it is another, because you have to make sure that when you're cleansing it, um, you tell them to imagine that all their, all the things that have come out of them are, are staying in the aura and that you're going to get rid of it, okay? Let them know what you're doing. You're saying, after this Reiki treatment, we're after, we have just finished the Reiki treatment, but you have the <coughs> things in the aura that need cleaned out. Let them know what you're doing so that they can be aware of it. Jim, um, so what is the difference between cleansing <coughs> it and smoothing it out? Right, I'll, I'll, I'll get to that. One minute, I need a drink. Oh, there's my water. But clearing it out is what you would do first. Because when you smooth it, uh, after after you clean it out, it still may be rough. There still may be rough spots on the aura, so you smooth it out and um, make it uh, smooth. Because what happens is people walk around on the earth 
and they run into people all the time in busy places, and some of these people are not good people necessarily, and they can put a dent in your aura or a or a, a crack or not a crack but a smudge or whatever, and it needs smoothed out at the end because you're running into all kinds of different people, and when your aura is smooth, you feel much better. It's much more comfortable. Also, when it's cleansed, it's much more comfortable as well. Um, you ask them about their aura. What color is it? Uh, what texture is it? Is there a sound related to it? Is there an emotion related to it? Is there a message in it? Can you write those things down for me, okay? When you're, when you're cleansing the aura before you do it, ask them if outside your body if there's a color, a texture, a sound, an emotion, or a message that's in there. They feel that there is around them somewhere. And when they answer that, then you have something to work with for the cleansing also. You can use that information to cleanse out those things. If it's, an, it's a, a message that they think they need, well, then um, don't cleanse that out. Your intention is to leave that message there. But to, to brighten the color, to br soften the texture, to make beautiful the sound, to make, you know, the emotion good. And so all these things are for their oral cleansing. Okay, and then you can so ask a question on, what? on that. Can I ask a question on that? Yes. So a lot of the time, the aware. So is that why we are interacting on this level? You know, allowing them to create their healing, and then you just assist it. Yeah. Yes, this is the final part of the healing because many things have come out of them while you were healing them. Okay, and then they've gone into their or their aura, and their aura is has these toxins and things that have come out of them. Maybe even the aura is have has trapped the pain from leaving all the way. The aura has you know trapped certain textures and colors from that were not necessary in the body or or we're needing brightening and they they're saying to them I still need this so you'll be able to understand when they say what is happening in their aura uh, what is going on pretty much it will come to you if you're prepared now for people who are not metaphysical those people that are just regular people off the street getting Reiki for the first time you might not want to talk to them about their aura, but you can still cleanse it by, uh, by intention, asking spirit to help you uh, to cleanse as much of it as possible and just let it go. And, and a lot of times, this kind of motion, you, the air over their body, did you ever see anybody doing that? Over the body, they, they, they bring out, they, they're changing the energy of the outside of the body. This is another form of the cleansing, and not and the smoothing is more soft, of course. But the cleansing, you can use like an air, you can use the air of your hands and in, intend that that energy be cleansed out. Like a sweeping motion, huh? Yes, like a sweeping motion. So, and so I have a question because yeah. you said there was a before and an after. So, like, when you were teaching us before, you were talking about, okay, you just, like, connect and see and feel if all the energy centers right. before, are open. Okay. So where does that come in yes. with clearing? Then, if you sense that their aura is not clear, you can start doing that right away. When they, The first thing you do before you start doing that is clean, uh, sweep over the aura then go around the body and open the uh, open the different uh, what are they called? Uh, the energy uh, points. <laughs> yeah, energy points around the body. I was thinking of the 
the the right word for the for the legs and the arms, but I couldn't think of it. So what, what the anyway, meridians, you mean? Meridian. the meridians. There you go. Cleansing all to awaken all the meridians to the energy, so that when you when you're actually giving the Reiki healing, you can, they can be you know they can get a better healing. So then you can ask them if they're ready to heal their aura. If if some people, you know, there's a lot of people that are very proper. So ask them if 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 they're ready to heal their aura right now. And if they are, then you can do it. And okay, what was the fifth thing? It was color, texture, sound, a message, or what? What was the emotion. fifth thing? Emotion. Emotion. All right. Thank you. Oh, I didn't. I missed that. Thank you, Dan. Yes, emotions. So, and this is when you're working with people who are kind of in tune that you've worked with and are like yeah. up with this kind of stuff. You wouldn't just. I don't do this with everyone because not everyone is into the metaphysical parts of it, mm -hmm. and they're going, "Aura, what's that?" Uh, you know, if you don't think that it's it's a good thing, just do the sweeping motions. That will help get rid of it. It won't be as effective as the other, but it will be effective in getting rid of a lot of it. And then smooth it out because, you know, everybody runs into a lot of different kinds of people in their life and some of them are not nice. And so smoothing out the aura just helps it uh, heal better. So, and so, okay. You have to, whenever you're doing an oral heal, aura healing, you set aside all your feelings, your personal feelings. You become more of a spiritual, it's more of a spiritual thing because it is in the aura and you want to just become, you know, you don't even think of yourself as a healer, just more of a spiritual uh, a cleanser at that time. You're like a Ajax spirit. So... Cleanse that out. So. so I have a question. Yesterday, I was, when I was giving Reiki, and I was kind of intending to go through the etheric, like the spiritual, mental, emotional, physical, and a lot of times I'll run my hands and see where there's either tingling or air or feeling or whatever. Yes. Anyway, so what my intuition was was to do kind of like this thing in the aura just to like move and then I guess scoop love and light. Yep. Um, there are that, so many things you can do, yeah. So it's just intuition a lot. I guess. Exactly. Please use your intuition. I'm I'm going to call my, uh, we're running very late, so I'm not going to go over, I'm going to finish this and then we're going to go to the, uh, some of the moves on the, on the Reiki bed. Do a Choku Ray if you have to for the, uh, for the uh, aura, if you need to put energy on the aura to get rid of some of the things that are in there. Um, and extend your fingers while breathing in the chokuri. They would prefer if you're working on the aura that you actually draw the chokuri in the air, in the aura. So, and then it is um, it is cleansed out, and you can smooth it out. Alrighty. Does anybody have any questions about that? I went sort of fast on that, but we're running out of time. Uh, yeah, just one quick one. When you were saying when you're cleaning the aura, just to keep yourself uh, out of it as much as possible, would another uh, good way to say that would be like temporarily dissolve your identity? Yes, if you want to say it that way. I would have never thought to say it that way, but that's fine. Absolutely. Thanks. No problem. Any questions about that? I, know, I hope you wrote that down because I went pretty fast on that. And now I would like to bring my uh, assistant down. He just went upstairs for a moment, but I will bring him in. But 
In the meantime, I am going to prepare, set up the uh, area so you can see them. You could ask questions if you would like in the meantime. So I was going to show who asked the question about dissolving your ego. <coughs> Yeah, that was me, Carl. Oh, hey, Carl. So, and my last thing, I thought this was very interesting, and I try to remember this when I do Reiki. Um, our teacher at the end of our session gave us, told us that we as practitioners are a hollow bone. Okay. So she gave us a piece of bone, and this is, we are nothing but a conduit. We're a hollow bone, and all of the energy that rolls through us knows exactly where to go and what to do. So I try to, when I, when I get confused and get my ego involved in how I want this to go, I try to remember myself as this, a hollow bone. Are you ready, Alan? Okay. okay. Thank you. Okay, um, I'm, get, I'm still getting things uh, ready here, so... Is everybody good at this time? Did you learn a lot? <laughs> tons yeah. of good stuff. Yes, yes thank you. Yes, tons of good really stuff. Good. <laughs> this is great. It's great and awesome. <laughs> Grossom. 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 Yeah, Grossom. It's Grossom. <laughs> it's 1222 here. One, two, two, two. Okay, I'm just preparing this for when he comes down so you can see him so that I can do some of these. I don't have a whole lot of time left to show you some of the uh, galactic moves, but of course, you know about uh, using the middle finger when drawing the symbols. I will draw the symbols on them uh, to show you what it looks like from a distance so that, you know, that would be the Choku Ray. Can you tell that that's a Choku Ray? Yeah. Very, it's yeah. difficult to see when your face, when your middle finger is facing down. But here comes my assistant now. So we're getting a little bit of a late start. So Alan, say hi. Hi, everybody. Hello, Alan. Hi, Alan. There, there's about ten people. Hi, Alan. Thank Hi. you for letting us watch. <laughs> yes, thank you. Are you okay? I'm good. Okay. Um, I'm gonna. I am going to go around his body because even though he's just my guinea pig, I do want him to have a good healing. So, I know him very well. So, uh, I don't have to ask him all kinds of questions, but I will go around. And relax and put energy into the body, okay? Does everybody do that? Yes. Good. Yes. Now, when you do this, do you feel the energy going in? I do. Yes. Okay, very good. I've done a couple of sessions, about four or five, and I really don't feel anything. I'm just trusting that it's working, and people are telling me it's working. So Excellent. It is working, then. It's, just, it's it just your belief system that's not letting you uh, quite know what's going on yet. I think so, yeah. But once you know and believe that you are healing somebody, you're going to start to feel the energy. It's going to make itself known to you. It's going to make itself uh, uh, say, hey, I need this person needs energy here, or this person needs energy there. So, And you might just have it in your head, but it, and you might not feel it in your hands, but you may know where you need to go. Sometimes spirit just uses the brain to guide you to where you need to go. But also, sometimes, um, if you ask them where the pain is, and they tell you, you'll find out that there's other places that they're having pain, and they didn't tell you about that place yet. But you'll find it. Has anybody experienced that? I've experienced that myself. Like, I'll have one pain that's more intense than the others. So once that pain subsides, then I'll 
feel the others. <laughs> exactly. And that's the same way with them. They're going to tell you, first off, where the most intense pains are. That's what, but then after they start to subside, you're going to be able to tell that there's other places in the body on your customer, client, patient that are hurting or need help. Now you see, I'm, he's taking in a lot of energy. So did you perform a symbol before you started that gym, or did you just... No, I did, and I'm just going around and opening him up right now. And where you're putting the hands on the body, they're specific? I, uh, well, I'm, I'm working on my, I do my own thing when it comes to um, how I put the hands on, because I use acupressure, but and Reiki at the same time, but you see, if most people would do this. They would just put their hands flat on the body or flat on the flat in the areas. This is under the knee here and on the, the kneecap, and this yeah. is the base of the foot. The base of the foot is there's a there's a chakra under here. So yeah, because I also know a lot about um Jim Jim Jiu-Jitsu as well. Um, I also know about jumpering the energy meridians in the body as well. So I was wondering where you were putting them. There was yeah. any relation well, to that. Oh, okay. I, I'm sorry. I didn't, wasn't explaining it while I was doing it, but I'm doing, right now it's foot to knee, and then it goes knee to wrist, or knee to elbow. You can do either one. And obviously this can be done with hands on and hands off as well. Yes, it can. And for and then, then either wrist to shoulder or or elbow to shoulder, whichever you feel uh, more effective. Uh, I feel a lot of energy going in his shoulders. Your shoulders hurt? Yep. Yep, his shoulders hurt. So, um, and also, if you feel a lot of energy going in the shoulders or the stomach, those are two places that people store stress. So you may be able to feel their stress on the shoulders and the, the stomach as well. Ladies especially have more in their stomach than men usually. I found that. And but both of them store on the shoulders a lot. Shoulders is where a lot of stress you'll be able to find. Okay, I'm going to show you a couple of different galactic moves now. I know that um, uh, Max is going to show you a bunch of galactic moves. This is one of the moves that um, for balancing the body. If you if um, if somebody comes to you and they're out of balance. Or they're they have it seems like they're something's not quite right. You you put your hands right at the the belt buckle kind of thing, like this in a prayer kind of a way. Put them right there, and then as you move out, you spread the air out <laughs> like that. I should go to the other side so I don't smash my hands on the window. Did you get that? It's like this motion. Once, twice, three times. Now, what that has done is cleansed out bad energy from the earth side, which is the base side, and cleansed out bad energy from the, uh, the uh, universe side. So you have cleansed that out. Do you understand that? This side, universe, this side, earth. So, But you did them both at the same time. You started in the middle. And now, you're going to step back and take a breath. Because that cleanses out your system, cleanses out the things that you just were handling right there. And now you're going to bring energy back in. You're, you're going to stand like this. See how my hands are? 
they're sort of cupped toward the sky universe, and then you're going to bring that back in once, twice, and three times. Now, that is brought back energy to this half and brought back energy to this half. And that is one of the things that will balance them out. Any questions on that? Any? Now that's a... Do you do that every single time? I didn't hear that. What? Do you do that every single session? No. Uh, not everybody is not uh, out of balance. But if you feel that it is necessary, it will come to you to do that. It balances out the energies from the earth and from the sky. That is what it does. It makes the body actually more relaxed. It actually relaxes the body. If, if you feel like somebody needs extra relaxation, that's something that you could possibly do as well because it does promote uh, a greater amount of relaxation. So, Jim, when you say balancing energy, what would be some of... Can you give us some example of what you consider unbalanced energy? If somebody comes in and they're upset or you feel a lot of tension from them, if you feel like they're... When you talk to them, they're not really uh, very comfortable or they're speaking sort of in an unusual manner, perhaps you'd want to balance them out because there's something not quite right there. Now, with Alan here, he's fine. He's just twice as balanced as he was before. <laughs> he does have some neck pain, so I'll work on that just a bit. But I also want to show you what Arcturians do. You will not be able to use this in your practice until we come to a greater understanding of what it really is. But um, I do have some understanding, and I did want to give you an example of it. Uh, so that you could at least know what it is if you see somebody doing it. Now, usually the Octorians, I think, uh, Sabrina, you've seen Octorian healing, right? Yes, I've done it. Yes, she's done it. But we're not sure exactly. I can tell you what you're doing, but how you're doing it, I'm not quite sure. What it is is, is that you're taking your hands, the Octorians will take control, and they will move around the body in a, a very soft way, connecting the nerves in a certain section of the body and then topping it off by hitting an, a nerve that activates all of them at the same time. So I've seen, is that make sense to you, Sabrina? It's like they're touching the ed edges of nerves and yes. bringing those, when they touch that sequence, it's in sequence, and they know exactly what to do in sequence. They bring these different things into sequence, <coughs> and at the end of the sequence, they hit one particular nerve. And that nerve brings all that sequence together for a healing effect. Now, I do not know how they do that, but it is uh, beautiful to watch, plus they sing blessings and chants while they're doing it. So it sort of looks like this. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, I, I've gone into trance and done it before, but I'm not doing it now. So I don't think going into trance right now would be the best thing. Uh, <laughs> Is there any questions on that? I'm just explaining exactly what it does. I'm really not, I'm not really not doing it to him, actually, so. Any questions? Is there any um, anybody that has a question on something that they do in their practice or with other people that they know works that uh, is not in the Reiki course? <laughs> I have something that happens sometimes where, sorry, um, where my hands will start to do like little 
twitchy things, like it'll start doing over certain areas. Okay. <laughs> like, you mean but, over top of the body and not on it? Yes, over top. Okay. Mostly, I feel the energy much more strongly above. Like, I generally feel through the auric field to see where the place that it needs, and I send energy from that place. And sometimes my hands are shake, shake like this. Or sometimes they do these weird hand motions, <laughs> like... Okay, and what does that do? Do you have any I, idea? I don't. <laughs> I have no idea. Um, I think I know what it does. It, it's, it's a way of uh, <coughs> excuse me, distributing energy uh, in a very soft way. Because when your hands are moving like this, the energy is going in like, like you, you're salting it. So like you're doing a very soft energy approach in that way. And something needs to be handled gently there. That would that's what it looks like to me. I could be wrong. But that's other times other times my feet, like where I'm grounded, are shaking and my hands will be like shaking uncontrollably also. I have no idea what that is either. Okay, well that's just strong, strong energy. A lot of people do shaking and go into spasmatic attacks because the energy gets so strong that they, their body's nervous system is re reacting to it. I've had that happen several times. But I go, oh, are you okay? And usually the answer is, no, it feels great. So um, it's not, a, not always a bad thing. But usually ask because it might not be the energy. They could be having a spasm of some sort, but most of the time it's just the energy working and flowing through the nerves, the nervous system. And yeah, it just feels like really strong energy, like, and it just hangs there, and then it'll quit. Same thing with the hand movements. It'll be like... Okay, and I'm going to show you another uh, Reiki move from Chakur. One more, more and more of those. It's getting almost time for us to do the uh, attune, attunement before I leave. But I want to uh, show you uh, another Reiki move. It's a heart, it's a heart clearing, and it's a heart uh, color enhancement. It's, um, it is, it's. You take the whole hand and you move it around the heart. One, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, and you scoop up whatever it is that's excess there, and you put it back in. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I think I went the same way twice. The first time I should have went counterclockwise. But then you put your hands like this, like two claw hands. And one is up here and one is down here. But they're both by the heart on the left side. And you can feel the energy and it feels really good. And it feels, and they're, and uh, um, that's like an emotional cleansing too for the heart. And everybody needs that now and then, whether they think they do or not. Whether they are, like, um, happy, sad, whatever, it, it does help with uh, getting rid of some of the negative energies. It, it pulls up negative energies from er other areas of the body that are related to the heart. Does that make sense to you? Emotionally related to the heart, like something yeah. you feel sort of, sadness and depression in your stomach, but it'll pull that up and out. Do you know what I'm saying? Jim, I have a slightly unrelated question. Sure. What about doing distance Reiki pain removal technique? What might you suggest for helping somebody remove pain at distance? Removing pain from distance is an intentioned thing. You have to intend yourself, first of all, 
to be removing the pain uh, that is there. The second of all, if, is there a specific area that they gave you? Concentrate on that area. When you do your Hanshaze Shonen, which is the long distance healing, concentrate on that and the area that you that is in pain and intend for that pain to be released. Now, in your mind, when I do Hanshaze Shonen and I know the area that's to be released the pain and all that, I think about pulling that pain right out. Pulling it out. I, I see the energy pulling it out. So that's something that I do for long distance. Now sometimes I don't know what what pains people are feeling, and so therefore I can't do that, but I can do say to the spirit, please help them with whatever pain that they have in their body so that um, they can feel better. Okay. All right, thanks, Jim. You're so, welcome. Does anybody have a question about this this yes. part right? Yes. yes. That one that you just did, Jim, so that one can be used for someone who had like a slight heart attack. Yes. It also is emotional, physical, spiritual, anything dealing with the heart in those ways, but it is but when you remove when you the symbol of removing and returning to the earth, removing and returning to the earth is very uh, important because that is your intent for the removal, for the purification, returning it to Mother Earth or whatever planet you're on, and having that energy renewed by the planet. And what if the person is not in front of you? Can you still do it? I imagine if you can do it in your mind, you can still do it, yes. Okay. I think the Hanshaze Shonen first, and then okay. the heart clearing. Okay. So then you send that particular act to them through space, through time. Any other questions? What was that called? That was heart brighter, bright, heart brightener, heart brightener. So you start with counterclockwise how many times and then? Uh, and then you scoop out three and then you do clockwise seven. Okay. And then you put your hands on like this for uh, this is to actually put in more energy as well, but it's also to give it a more e even effect. You don't want to put too much energy in one spot. So this move here with the claws that are going up and down the side there are to just balance the energy there. So in the meantime, I'm giving him a Reiki heal, a Reiki. Uh, treatment too a little bit. I'm doing my head full, which I don't think anybody, you put your hands like this behind the back of the neck. You see how my hands are? You, you go behind the back of the neck, put the left hand is under, is underneath the right hand, and I, I move, it's easy to move the neck around and the head. And you put just a slight bit of tension on the neck, pull it out, and that helps with uh, nerve relaxation because many times people's necks, when they're looking down a lot, when they're looking to the side a lot or up, um, things get out of, out of place. And this helps that pull the spine just a little bit so that all those nerves right at the top of the neck and the bottom of the head and the top of the spine are are back into the right alignment and it actually feels really good doesn't it? It sure does. It sure does. It feels excellent and it's very relaxing and when you're done with it their their uh, nerves are have been put back into somewhat the right order because your nerves can get out of place too that's why we have such thing as uh, sciatic pain and nerve pain. It's when the nerves get out of place. So, um, also I do this thing with the head. I I take my hands and I use them in a uh, in a way that seems like uh, acupressure. And I just put them on the head, and I can feel that energy going into the head. 
And so that helps with the clarity of thought and getting rid of any negative thought processes or actually if they need some help with uh, clarity of thought, of course. But uh, anybody ever try that? Yeah, I tried that one. Yeah, it works really well. Any more it's questions right now? I think, Max, are you back? No, not quite yet. We have like a couple more minutes and then Max will be back. Um, and then th at that time we'll do an attunement. But in the meantime, I'm just going to continue to give him a little bit of a Reiki treatment. And I would like anybody to ask any questions that they may have. I'm not giving him the regular Reiki treatment because we didn't start out at the beginning and I wasn't and I'm not doing a full hour on him, but he is going to get some energy and it will make him feel better. So, I have a question about the heart brightener. Yes. Um can that be used um would that be an effective tool to use with someone who's like perpetually um, unhappy. <laughs> yes, it would. It, it would because uh, you're getting, your, your intention is only to scoop out that which it doesn't belong there. When you're doing that scooping motion three times, it is only intended to take out what does not belong where, there and not to take out the things that are good. Just the stuff that's excess and doesn't belong there, or negative, or whatever. Um, so yes, it would be great for an unhappy person, because when you're doing that scooping, you will feel that it's pulling from other areas of the body as well. It pulls from all the areas that, um, that have emotional attachments to the heart. Some people have uh, thought processes that are attached to the heart. Some people have um, depression, which is down lower in the body, attached to the heart, different things of that nature. You'll feel them pull out. It feels really good. It's like, ah, and you're sort of dumping it. Would you expand on the idea of depression from a lower part into well, connected to the heart? All right. When you connect to the heart, if you're doing it for an emotional reason, if you're looking for emotions that don't belong there, you'll find depression can be in the lower part of the body sometimes because that's where it seems to settle. People get stomach problems, uh, liver problems, different things when they have trapped emotions in those parts of the body. You can have trapped emotions in your, your organs or your intestines or whatever. And so when they're pushed down deep like that, a lot of... A lot of times when people are depressed and they don't release it, it pushes down deep into their body and causes uh, sicknesses and it causes pain and all kinds of things. So therefore, whenever you do these release, you can pull these, these uh, emotions up out of there. You know what I mean? It may take more than one, one or two brighteners, but it is, they do work. They make you do feel better. <clears throat> and they do uh, revive the emotional state. And they make your heart feel... I mean, some people are un unable to love. Some people are unable to feel things. And with this different technique, Takur tells me that you can help people to feel again when they, when they were not able to feel much before and that you can open up their uh, heart chakra to love and to acceptance and things of this nature. Does that include helping someone with their own self-love? Of course it does, if that is what is intention. Very good. Alrighty, I'm not sure if Max is back yet or not. But I'm going to continue to do this until he gets back. Is there any other questions? Is there any uh, questions on the hand positions in any way? Mm -hmm. 
Um, I have a question about grounding. Yes. I I know that for me in the beginning I would ground myself at any point when you start scanning the body for the energy fields. Do you intend like automatically, or do you actually go through a process where you ground them through this thing, or do you wait till the end to ground them, or what? How do you uh, do it? Sometimes it depends. You during your uh, Reiki treatment, you'll get different messages to do different things, and sometimes I don't even get the message to ground some people because they're already grounded. But if you do get the message at any time during your Reiki session, then I would do it then because that's when they're ready for it. Does that make sense to you? Yes. Good, because the body will, the spirits will, if you intend to have a really good Reiki session, ask the spirits to let you know when to do what. And they will. They absolutely will because in many times... I was doing Reiki on people at the YMCA, and it just was amazing the different results you got there because these are people off the streets that are just freshly exercised and are like somewhat in pain, some of them, because they over-exercise or what. But they were done. When they were done, they were like so relaxed and their pains were gone and they were like ready to do more exercises. But with Reiki, you tell your patients drink lots of water after a Reiki session, lots of water, and do not do anything stressful for at least eight hours. In fact, I would say the rest of the day. Why, why limit it to eight hours? I just say relax the rest of the day, drink plenty of fluids, and then tomorrow you'll feel a lot better. You might even feel better today, but tomorrow you'll feel even better. More better. I don't know if that's a word. More better. Do any, of the, do any of the other participants have questions? Yes. Please do come forward and ask, because I'm sure somebody must have a question. We're taking in a lot of energy back here. Douglas is asking for more details about distance healing. Okay, the Han Shose Shonen. Um, yeah. Anything in particular? If you do the motions, if you draw the Han Shose Shonen in the air with your middle finger, as I demonstrated before, and then put your intent on long distance healing, if there's a particular person, it's always best. You can send out long distance healing just over an area. But usually when I do Ancho Ze Shonen, it's for a particular person or maybe one or two people in the same household usually. And then I uh, in, do my intent for what I would like to happen in that situation. And a lot of times, interestingly enough, people will uh, talk to you about a time when they felt that particular healing happen. It's funny, I all, it always... It doesn't always get back, but many times it gets back to me that, did you send me healing this day because I, I felt this and that and the other thing? And yes, if you send long-distance healing, it is very effective. Yeah. Is there a particular question he has about it? Dan? <laughs> Is there a particular question that he has about it, or did that answer his question? Uh, I don't know. It was kind of general. Max is back. Um, no, just just tips for distance healing, I guess. Okay, very good. Hi, Max. Hi, Jim. Hi, Jim. Hey, welcome back. We're just finishing up right now. So, um, do you want? What would you like to do next? Would you like to talk a bit, or? Do you want the, us to do the attunement? Yeah, let's start do, doing attunements and then I will talk. Because they need an attunement from Ish for the Tinch J, and then they need the Reiki attunement. Yeah, let's do all at once. All right, I'll have Ish come in first, but let me finish here real fast. No rush, no rush. At the moment. 
but no hurry. Okay. Were there any announcements? Uh, yeah, announcements are that we have uh, uh, Simon and um, Dog on. Uh, they're viewing, but they just can't speak. They have to type. But they're viewing through YouTube and they type through Skype. So they're participating. Excellent. Thank you. Doug and Simon. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Jim, Douglas yeah. has responded. He, he wants to know, can a group of healers get together and do distance healing and for how long? Um, yes, and for indefinitely. For you can do it. You can do long distance healing for a long period of time if you want. Usually I spend about 15 minutes a day on it because I have a busy schedule. But I used to spend, like, I used to lay in bed before I got out of bed and just do long distance healing for until I thought it was okay to stop. And uh, I don't have time to do that anymore, but it is very effective. And I will be with you in one minute. Can we take this minute to go to the restroom? Yes. That's a great idea. Why doesn't everybody take a break, and then we'll have the attunement after the break when you're all fresh? That would be awesome. Thanks, Jim. Yeah, take about 10 minutes. And then that'll give me time to finish you up. You're very relaxed. Actually, my 15-minute thing, 15, 
my 15 uh, participant thing actually is working. <laughs> I just from the phone, so we have 11 now. Good, it's just in time for the attunement. Bring them all in. We can't hear you, Max. Okay. Yeah, what I'm saying is 15, 15 minute thing is working. 15, oh, 15, 15 users, 15 seat, 15 seat option is working. 15 users, 15 seats. Right now, right now we have 12, uh, 11, 11. I just logged in from my phone, so so that thing is working. But it's only for one user account. We can't use managers. Okay, so I don't know if it's because this is a private event, and maybe Simon wasn't added in the list. I don't know. Oh, with Simon and Dog, it's <laughs> I can't tell him. Because he can't, he can't get in. I know, I know, I know. And Max, you have two of them. Oh, now you don't. Never mind. I dropped. I know. <laughs> Just kidding. So. So the problem 15 people partly solved. Basically, for Reiki classes, we can have 15, or for whatever events where I, which all I organize from my personal account. But uh, I cannot invite managers. They don't allow to invite managers. Basically, that's it. And for Dog and, and Simon, I can't really fix at the moment. Uh, we have to, you know, keep them. Let me try to give them other link. Maybe that would work. Just in case. Are you smoothing? Were you just smoothing, Jim? Yes. And now I'm going to say the bond between me and thee is broken for now. Or mm -hmm broken, so that mm -hmm. you don't bring any of that, uh, whatever ails him into you, or whatever mm -hmm. ails you into him. When you're touching him right now, that when you just broke the bond, when yeah. is that when you were breaking it? Yeah. And so you have your fingertips on the solar plexus and the I, sacral area? Yeah, you can do it that way, but you can do it whatever way you want. Some people just just say it. They just hold their hands out and go, the bond between me and thee is broken. But I like to touch when I say that. Okay. Thank but you. you don't have to. You can break the bonds with your words. I'm looking out the window. It's our first snowfall today. Wow. We have still snow on the ground. Is it pretty? Pretty cold. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's pretty, I guess. <laughs> now... He can lay there as long as he wants because he's relaxed. I think he's half asleep. So, and if somebody falls asleep on the bed, that's a compliment. So, nothing wrong with that. That means you put them in the relaxed state that they should be in for healing. So, excellent. When everybody's back, let me know. They have a couple more minutes. I'm back. Oh. Alex is online. Is she here? No, but she's watching on the other. Okay. Hi, Alex. Welcome back. <clears throat> 
So, Jim, I will be participating. Uh, I will be giving the attunement, so you don't need to attune me. Oh, you'll be giving an attunement later? No, then parallel. You'll, gi you'll be giving the, all the attunements to them today? Cool. I will be seconding you. I will copy whatever you do. Oh, okay. Very good. I think Ish will do the Tinche attunement first. Because he's already here. Wonderful. Hey, let me go. Hold on. Let me know when everybody's back. Let me ask everybody. So, Katie's here, Gurudan is here. Um, Carl is here. Kim, are you here? Yes, I'm here. Arobi, are you here? Present. Yep, Michelle. Sabrina, are you here? Yes. And Valerie. Yes. Thank you. And Doug, Doug is here. Simon, I'm not sure. Uh, yes, he's he's around. Um, okay, it, the link didn't work for him. So okay. it must be something with him then. OK. All right, is everybody ready for the attunement by Ish? Yes. Oh, I have to bring him in. All right. Hold on. Hello. Oh, thank you. Welcome. Hello. How is everyone today? Wonderful. Great. I know why you have called me. You have come for the 
attunement, as you call it. We call it an upcharge, charge up, whatever, for the uh, tints che. Yes. And I can do you all at once. Fortunately, this is a, an activation that can be done with the whole group. But I need certain actions to be followed for you to do such a thing. You must put your hands in a prayer-like position because that is what you do on your planet for prayer. We have different positions for different species, but this position for your hands will do quite nicely for earthlings. You must also close your eyes and clear your head for one moment. I will be quiet when I will before I do the attunement. I will let you Say your own prayer for one minute or somewhere in that area. Open yourselves up to the attunement. Make sure you are aware that this is an attunement for the bringing in of uh, earth type energy and for universal type energy. The two different drawings of the tin, uh, the tinch che. Is everybody aware of the rules so far? No questions? Yes, thank you. Yeah. Very well. I will give you your chance, and then the attunement is not very long at all, but it will be just follow my instructions. You may have your one minute or two minutes of meditation at this time. With your hands folded in the prayer position and your eyes closed. Let us begin. First off, the power of the Tin Che is only to be used for good. It cannot be used for negative or malevolent uses. It is only for the usage of empowering individuals in many different ways. Veritun, veritun, vaspli torret, yan siswid. Veritun, veritun, vaspli torret, yan siswid. Veritun, veritun, vaspli torret. Yan Satsvit
Kura Koshok to Wa Siem Kyakot. Let this attunement fall upon you in your energy fields. When you are displaying a need for these energies, do not hesitate to use them, but be swift to use them for positive and wonderful uses. You are now all attuned to the Tinch Che and are able to use it with power and confidence. Very tune, very tune, respri toret, yen setsuid. May the power of Tin She be with you. That is all. You may now open your eyes and release your hands. You may not have felt anything at this time, but when it is activated the first time you use this tinch, hey, you will know that it is there. You will feel its energy and you will know its positivity. It cannot be used for malevolent reasons or reasons to hurt another. It is an energy field that is only positive and only for use in positive way. Much love to you. I know that you are waiting for yet another attunement for the Reiki 2 class. And so therefore I leave you now and to Kerr will come. Thank you. Thank you all and may you have a wonderful lifetime of healing and positive energy. Thank you, much. Thank you, and blessings. Thank you. Gosh. Much love, Ash. Thank you. Yo. I am Takur. Hi, Takur. Welcome. Thank you. You have already received one attunement for the Reiki 2 class. This attunement will be slightly different. This is more of an attunement for you to become successful in all that you do with your healing. So it will not be like the first attunement because the first attunement was an Asui attunement. This will be more of a Lyran attunement. Is that all right with you, Max? I do not hear his voice. Hello? So, is that all right with you, Max? Yes. So it will be different. I will go to each person individually if I can. There are some of you that are not visible on the screen. How will I tune them? Just call for Doug and for Simon. They hear you and they watch you. They just can speak. First since they are not on the screen. Wonderful. They confirm they're here. Yes. They are there, correct? Yeah, they're here. Yes. <coughs> Excuse me. Jim had to sneeze. One moment. Simon, I will do you first. And who is the other one that's there? Douglas? Yes. Simon, I will do you first. Put your hands in the prayer position because that is the position of Earth's reverence. Wichika Korowa. The symbols, all that have been said and known, will be with you. And the symbols that are not known, also with you, in their power to enforce those which things are already known. May you have a wonderful healing experience. May you go and be a great healer. The symbols that I add to you now you will not know anything about 
until the time comes when we are a part of who you are. Be well and blessed and powerful in your healing accomplishments. Douglas. May all the symbols that you've learned today and through the past be part of you. And the symbols that I add now are those symbols that will be part of your life to come. Be well and teach others how to do these things that will help humanity. My love is with you and great energy as well. Take care to know that you are a healer and to spread this gift throughout your kind. <sighs> Casey. This attunement for you will broaden your sight as far as your spiritual and your visual and emotional sight you will be able to see into the hearts of others. You will be able to know the symbols of eternity, for they are with you, and they are full of love. Your symbols are very powerful and are attuned to you well. My love be with you, and be a great healer. Move out and be all that you can, because you are one of a great gift. Thank you. Much love. Namaste. Namaste. Guru Dan. Mami Shokwa. These symbols that are added to you today in attunement will be of a great gift to you. You understand that your healing energy goes out many miles. And you understand that your gifts are truly one of a kind. And therefore, be blessed and bless others with all these things that you can do. Your mind is full of the excitement of healing. And that is a great and wonderful gift in itself. The ability and the want to help others. Be blessed. Thank you, Tukur. Kiata. Carl. These symbols are added unto you in a great way. And I give you even more because there is more energy for you to obtain. But at this time, you are gifted and are the, one of those that can heal. Do not doubt it. You can feel everything within your heart. And it does not have to show up in your hands. But... I can see that all the things that are coming to you will give you the blessing and the energy to be a great healer. Go forth and show the world that you are proud of this gift. Kim. Yes. Ah. Your hands are full of energy and the symbols have borne themselves inside your head and your hands. You will always have them, whether you speak them, think them, or draw them. The energies of other symbols are coming to you as well, and you are enlightened in the sense of healing. You may not be able to see all the things that you want, but the spirit of the world and of the universe is with you in a strong way. You will understand that your heart is going out to others as their heart comes to you as well. May your love and understanding help you and guide you into health and fullness and into a practice that is very, very helpful for others. Thank you, Thank Tucker. You are blessed. Rowie. Am I pronouncing that correctly? Rowie. You can say Rowie. 
you can say it any way you wish. Your energy is beautiful. May the love of the universe continue to fall on you. I see that you've had many blessings, and the power increases within you in many ways. Healing is one, and channeling and being gifted in other ways are other gifts. But the symbols that I add unto you today will be revealed at a later time. But you may use all these symbols and be gifted by them. Share this love of healing with those that you are loved, which you, those you love, and those who love you as well. Go forth and be great. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Michelle. Yatatawati. There is a great energy falling upon you now. And the symbols have already become fully intact within you. There are other symbols making their way into your heart, mind, and spirit that will be useful to you, and you will not even know where they come from, but they are from love and from spirit and from Akashic areas. And be of good cheer, for these are for you for a reason. There are some that only you may be able to touch and heal. There are some that will come to you with great burdens, and you will be able to relieve them, with the help of spirit, of course. So thank the spirit for all the things that you have, for all the gifts that are being given to you now, and let them flow as a river would flow out of you. Sabrina. These symbols have touched your heart and your mind. And added on to that, there are many things in your world that need healed. And you can reach out your hands and touch and heal those things that need to be healed. Thank God for this ability. Thank God that you are who you are at this time. Because you are one of great power not only in healing, but in other ways as well. Grab hold of your destiny and do not let it go. Thank you. Valerie, I give you these symbols, Mushum Skari Aratam, and with it many blessings. Your heart is open and full. You are a good healer. You are a great person. Hold fast to these things always. It will make a great impact. As an example, you are to the world and to your family and friends. They will know that you are special and gifted. And the symbols that I add on to you will make you a greater healer indeed. And you will be able to find your way in the most difficult situations. And you've come through many. And I see right now that your third eye is opening and your heart is full of the love that it brings. Go, be well, be a great healer. Did I miss anyone? Thank you so much. Be blessed, all of you. Take your gifts very seriously. They are not to be taken lightly. You are healers, and you must use that gift. It will come back a hundredfold to you because of the intent that you bring to it. Much love and blessings to you. And Max, do you want to add anything to this? I think it occurred. I uh, bless everybody, and I thank everybody for taking on Reiki, and I thank Reiki for taking on everybody. Uh, we are one. Takur, thank you for officiating that. It is wonderful to be united with you in that wonderful way. Do you want me to give you an attunement? 
Not at this moment. I will be teaching. I'm in a teaching mode. Thank you. Be blessed. And I will leave you all at this time. Thank you for your love and devotion to your healing energy. Thank you, Chakar. Thank you, Chakar. Thank you. 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 Hello. Ooh. Hello. How are you doing? Welcome back, Jim. Wonderful. Thank you. All right. It is time for me to let Max take over. Sorry we cut into your time a little bit, but... No, no. I, it's my fault. Sorry. Oh, not a problem. Um, Thank you, Jim. Much love, and I will talk to you all later. I'm going to do some... I'm going to have a little lunch here, and I will talk to you later. Thank you, Jim. Have a great day, Jim. Hi, Jim. Yeah, Jim, you don't need to come back to that class. You can, you have your time. Okay, much blessings and thank you, everyone. I hope you learned a lot, and I will see you all very soon. I'm sure. Much Jim. love. To you. Much love, Jim. Much love, Jim. Can you thank touch you. base much with love. Alex um, here pretty soon, Jim, and get her caught up? All right. Very good. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. All right, I have two topics to discuss. Um, I, I have only about one and a half hours. Um, you are all in a wonderful, um, uplifted mood. So let's start from the higher level. I'll start from, and then we'll go back to marketing, <laughs> uh, which is also very high level, but just different tone, different vibration. So I'll start with the blessing. I thank you all. I thank everybody who is listening. I thank you all for participating in the class. Um, much gratitude to all of you. You are wonderful. You are love. You are Reiki itself. Thank you for stepping forward towards Reiki. The Reiki steps forward towards you. You become one. Understand the power of the symbols. The symbols become more powerful every time you use it. Use them with harmony. Every time you use the symbol, you draw the symbol with the harmony, you synchronize through the time. <laughs> How can you synchronize through the time? But you do. You make the same movement of the fingers, of the hand, of the body, and of the soul as many other Reiki practitioners at this time and any other times, the past and the future. That's why the symbol is so powerful, because it transcends the time. It synchronizes across the time with the founder of Reiki. And some of those symbols are much older than hundred years old when the Reiki was founded. Hosha <sighs> Zeshanen, <clears throat> Reiki distance healing, having no present, past, or future. Understand that it's also having no space. Space and time are collapsed into the eternity with that symbol. It is also explaining that everything is perfect right now. That's another meaning of the symbol. It is everything is perfect right now. That's one of the main principles of Reiki because we live in a very mixed up time and no matter how perfect, how pure we become, we still are hybrids. We still move between 3D, 4D, upper dimension, lower dimensions. We connect them together. We are shuttles, shuttles which go back and forth and unite. We are uniters. We are paradigm shifters. So the principle of Reiki, when you are in a healing mood, when you are in a healing state, 
bring everything together and that's where the time and space collapse and become eternity and infinity eternity and infinity and that's when the miracle is possible that's how the symbols work and uh, show he sorry Sehiki is the symbol the earth and sky meet um, that's a symbol where basically you unite with God you invite God down here and you lift yourself up to God and also you lift your patient to God and God and patient unite so that's collapsing the dimension the dimensional collapse symbol I love it and that would be one of my favorite ones to ask for miracles through that simple collapsing of dimensions of course we understand that everybody is every dimension you have all the dimensions connected to you, you are all the dimensions. Your chakras are one of the main ways how you connect to all the dimensions. Throat chakra is connecting you to the spirit world, to the world of human discarnate spirits and to angelic world. And your crown chakra connect you directly to God and your mind chakra, third eye chakra connect you connects you to the higher levels of dimensions beyond beyond human spirits non to non human higher dimensional spirits and your upper heart connects you to the, our friend the aliens of the four dimensions for density and obviously all lower chakras connect you to all other dimensions and levels and of course it's just a simplistic explanation every chakra connects you to every dimension and every your DNA molecule connects you to every dimension so it's all all interconnected on all on every possible level oh, any questions so far no not yet wonderful thank you thank you now let's do the movements I promised you some of the movements uh, I will start from my favorite. How is the sound? I can make it louder or quieter if you wish. Is it good? It's I'll good. Step, step away a little bit so I'll make it a little louder. One, two, three. All right, so I will start from imaginary patient. I invite them to lay on the bed. I cover them with blanket if they wish. I put the pillow under the sheet so I can rub the, the patient with the sheet, the face. And I uh, put also underneath, I put another pillows. Many of the patients, especially the older ones, like to have a pillow underneath because they're kind of, they're, they're a little more comfortable. And anyway, so I put my hands and start speaking to them. And I ask, what's your day and month of birth? I ask, what's your, day, your favorite color? I smile, I ask them to breathe, and I tell them, especially for the new ones, breathe in the energy from the universe, from the sun, the golden energy, and when you breathe out, send it to the heart, and inflate a ball of golden flame in your heart, and make it grow bigger and bigger. So that's the major visualization that they do. And then it, I don't move my hands much, I just sit with that position and have a whole conversation if it is a first time student that could be quite longer conversation if it is not a first time client I would speak maybe shorter but I would still establish what is their intent for today I usually don't ask for diseases or tr troubles because I don't want to breathe that as a trouble but I ask what is your intention for today what are we going to work on what's your desire for today and sometimes I don't have much desire for the body, so I ask about desires for their life, and that's how we continue. And I see it sometimes, very often, in most cases, I have wonderful rapport, how do you say, rapport with their head, so I work on their head for a long time. It feels very happy, especially in this area that is like a buzz going on. I, I establish a connection, and I feel how how I'm needed there, how my energy is needed. For many new young people, for many, many 
healthy people, I discover that my purpose, I look always for my purpose, I discover that my purpose is not healing the pain, not healing a disease or disbalance, but what? What's the purpose? Any ideas? Jim, you know, right? Any ideas? If it's not healing, what is it? Emotional? If it's not emotional healing, what is it? You know the answer. I just wonder if you can read my mind. All right. Uh, it's an upgrade. It's just an upgrade. So they're happy, young, healthy. They just need an upgrade. <laughs> and often I would speak about it before actually doing it. But for some who are trusting, who are open to that, I wouldn't even say that. I would just intend an, an upgrade. And I feel how it is happening. I cannot describe it in a better way except that I'm being guided where to move, how to move. I feel the energy is flowing, but I that's my level of understanding how the upgrade, upgrade works. I understand that the main idea of an upgrade is that the veil becomes more transparent, the DNA becomes more coherent, pure, clean, structured in a prettier way. And I mean that. I really mean that. It's the main thing of the upgrade is smoothing out things up and structuring things up. And I think the etheric body, which is connected to the physical body, becomes more connected through chakras, through DNA, through meridians, through smaller chakras, through other things which are not don't have names in our language, become more connected to the spirit, to the tree of life, to the higher self, to other levels of the spirit, to other dimensions, to other DNAs. DNAs. So one thing which is comes often is that how many strands do you have of DNA? In this physical body, three-dimensional, you have two strands. An etheric body has another two strands. And different layers of spirit body have also two strands, two strands. So as you become upgraded, you connect to this other two and two and two and two strands. You get more. And what is interesting, these other dimensions are... When they're connected to your dimension, they become multidimensional. So in this multidimensional space, all these strands make a helix, one helix. Not multiple two-dimensional helices, two strand helices, but one multidimensional helix with many strands. So in a way, saying that our DNA becomes multi-stranded is true, except those strands are in other dimensions. So we, that's what we are doing, we upgrade them, and that's the intention, and how do you know it's happening? Obviously, if the energy flows well, you feel happy, you feel presence, you feel that your head and other parts of the body become, you know, they feel the presence. Sometimes it's heavy, sometimes it's a buzz, and lately I feel that wonderful noise, which is very deep, very, just the, not the noise, the tune, which sounds like very deep, oh, very clean sound. I cannot reproduce it, but <clears throat> something of that. Oh, and what feels about sound, this sound is reverse spinning. If you can see my hands, it spins backwards in my mind. Like, and if I invite it, I also spin my mind. Like, I give my mind that backwards spin. Oh. <laughs> And yeah, that, that works great for me. When I kind of intend that the spin, it comes clearer, and it's my invitation for them to come. OK, so the upgrade. So I work a lot on crown chakra. So often I would hold the hands above the head and work on, on the crown chakra and above. There is several layers of more chakras there. And they become activated for some people. They're very active from them. Very beginning for some, they activate gradually as they develop. Their intention is important, your intention is important. Um, spinning the chakras, it's easy. You just kind of spin it, give it a spin, right? Spin it. Uh, that would be the easiest move for the spinning the chakra. I wouldn't do it in the beginning. I would do it more when I understand what's my intention. And I would spin. 
Now, in which direction you would spin the chakra? That is very confusing. I think each chakra has both directions working at the same time. So it's overlaid, two different energies spinning at the same time in both directions. So as I understand, it doesn't really matter. Because if you start thinking about that, you become crazy. Should I spin it in clockwise direction when I look at the patient? So clockwise this way, or when I look from the in my inside? So if you spin it on yourself, is it clockwise from you or clockwise from somebody who looks at you? It's crazy, and just go with your intuition. I don't think it is definable. But if you like to study that, there will be different opinions, and uh, I just don't know, except one thing. I know that DNA is a right-handed spiral. Like our regular screws, you know our regular screws, they're all right-handed spiral. What well, the rule of thumb is, right? I'll show you. Yeah, it goes like that. It goes like that, forward, forward, forward like that. OK? So um, if you want to synchronize their, your movement with the DNA, you have to kind of go down clockwise forward and clockwise, so that's a major speed. But if you do otherwise, I think it would be just fine. The intention is more important. Now, what, then I would go around the body and work on different chakras. Like recently I got almost no, the, the client had almost no contact or energy flow on the head. The, clear, the head was closed. And I know that, that the gentleman is an into the Reiki, so I was very surprised. But, you know, if, if the energy doesn't isn't intended to go there, that's fine. I keep moving. And when I went to his uh, area of the throat chakra, it was like above the throat chakra. I didn't want to touch it because it, that is very sensitive for some people. So I would hold my hands above. The energy flow was tremendous and wonderful and very happy. So I just assumed I needed an upgrade. And here's silence, usually silence, silent. And uh, I think that they, he, he needed the activation of throat chakra to express himself better, to communicate better. So that was clear understanding when I was doing that. He was well developed, very spiritual, but law. Lonely, lonely, yeah, not very well connected. So that was the connection was the idea and uh, connection through throat chakra. Uh, sometimes it is heart chakra which needs work. Any chakra it's possible, but that would be very often heart chakra. And uh, the, these days many people need help in their area of the veil, the diaphragm. Diaphragm. It's upper liver and spleen, the top of the liver, top of the spleen, top of their belly, right under the heart. That's where the pain is stuck, and it just can help them to unst unstuck it. So I would go through through the body and uh, just kind of experiment and experience how the energy flows. And if it flows wonderfully, I wouldn't even move for, for minutes. One thing to know, I wanted to mention, is that when I start to speak, my energy diminishes. But because I'm used to separate myself, I speak, but my hands still are working. So it diminishes, but it continues to flow, unless I say something uh, which would stop it. And I pay attention. And usually I apologize, invite it to flow again, and it starts flowing again. But, you know, that stoppage is, I notice it. When things are said which don't resonate with energy, not even bad things, just not resonate, and it stops. So pay attention to the conversation when you speak. And very importantly, when people start to speak, their energy on their head, when, when I kind of work on them and I ask them a question, they answer the question, it stops completely. So it takes me another little bit of time just to start it again. And sometimes it stops and doesn't start as well as before. So be cautious when you start a conversation when the energy already flows. So it really like depends what you say. I, I discovered, for, I learned from another practitioner that a happy yes really helps the energy flow even better. Just yes.
like that. Yes. <laughs> it brings confidence to yourself, to the patient, to the energy, always, everything just, just moving better. I didn't get to the movements of the energy yet. Not much. Okay. All movements of the hands. So, and then when uh, I, I go to the second round, and that's where I could work with the scan. After the first, first round going through different points, very generally, I would go with the scan. If I need to scan, if I need the answers, I would scan the whole patient from top to bottom, from bottom to top, and pay attention that on different levels, the energy would be different. So sometimes you cannot feel their heart chakra near the body, but it could be like here or here. You could feel this perfect spot where you move the hand through, you just feel like little bump, little bump or little buzz. You can move the hand around and the buzz will stay in place. And for me, it's like perfect demonstration that the chakras are real. On the other hand, I find them in surprising places, so they're not always where they're supposed to be. Very often they are, some of them are blocked, some of them are moved, some of them are uh, just want to be there today at this moment. So <laughs> recently I usually ask, not what is your favorite color, but what's your favorite color today? Or if the person doesn't, favorite, doesn't have a favorite color, that would be a great question. What is your favorite color today? Same thing with the chakras. Where are your chakras today? <laughs> and that's where if there is a certain place and especially if they tell you about the trauma and you kind of do your analysis understand what's happening there that's where you start doing the hands movements again people are very different some people are what's that word unstable right unstable breakable that is vulnerable. What do you say about the glass, which is breakable? There is a special word. Vulnerable, anyway. So some people are vulnerable, and you don't want to shake them too much. So with those people, you have to understand how to deal with them. But you, you will be gentle and not to use a lot of different movements. And especially at the end, like there is a tradition to do some brushing of the energy. Like, phew, phew, and you make this wonderful sound. I did it for a while because it, it, it felt funny and felt happy. But then I was told that maybe it's nice when you build something just to leave it alone. And the best exit at this point would be just you kind of thank them. You don't have to say it aloud, but you can thank them for allowing to work on them. So I thank you for work. Thank they say thank you, you say thank you for allowing to work on you, thank you for being part of this healing. Thank you for the opportunity to work on you. Thanking in the beginning, thanking in the end is very good. So you thank them. And the easiest way to disconnect is just turn. When you turn, you you get and with intention to disconnect. You you, you disconnect. So you, sometimes they just turn all the way around and just stay, meditate on the disconnection. I'm now in a, a new space. So in a very graceful way to disconnect because you know there are other ways to disconnect like like I shake all the dirt from from myself but it's not polite so I I like this this gentle um, disconnection better okay so for a vulnerable person especially for those with mental emotional problems that movement is. It comes from Bashar, by the way, Bashar's, uh, Bashar's movement. It's uh, inf infinity sign, infinity sign, and you can work with one finger, two fingers, or the whole palm. I will show it this way. So, so that's be very co co conscious of of how your hand hand moves. Make it move with their flow of the energy. Because, you know, you can see when people move their hands, they are very often very tense. So the tense hand would move like that. It's it's tense. It's 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 okay, but you know the proper way 
proper, how the energy moves would be that. And again, if you move this, it's very smooth, right? You kind of allow your hand go through the energy, right? And we move that, it's like water. You force it, you force it, you, you force it. Don't force it, let it, let it be moved just gently, invited, more, more inviting than forcing it, okay? Now, the speed. Understand that this energy is in our space and time, and it has its own speed. When you do it too fast, too fast, it becomes unhappy. It beca makes lots of different vortexes, lots of like in water, it makes a lot of uh, commotion. It's more like mixing everything up instead of healing. When you move too slow, you actually become connected to a very slow energy, and it's very profound. I don't know if you want to be that profound. So move in the middle, like like gentle middle middle. You have to feel it, and that's how you move the hand, like in the middle. It's uh, you interact with those light energies, and the intention is to connect right and left hemisphere, right and left eye, right and left ear, and balance everything, and basically reconnect everything together. And obviously, after you do it, you just fix it and heal it just by, by placing the hands and intending everything to structure in a new, more healthy way. Okay? Any questions so far? Is that just on the head region? Uh, that is intended for the head region. Obviously, you can do it for any two chakras. Uh, heart and solar plexus would be a wonderful combination. That's what I would do. I would do both. I would do this connection, heart and solar plexus. Um, and I would do the the infinity sign as well. Same thing with any two, like heart and uh, root chakra, heart and sexual chakra, heart and throat chakra, throat chakra and any other chakra. Um, also, the so the palms is one way to connect things. It shows me something. Okay, the palm is one one way to connect things, and the the fingers is another. So alien is more fingers. So so going through fingers and connecting here and there through fingers gives a little different intention, different little little different. Efficiency, the silver energy, more of proactive alien. So basically, you invite alien Reiki. When you work with fingers, especially on the bony structure, you invite alien Reiki. Any more questions? Or any questions about that? No. What did the bone structure have to do with the infinity sign? I don't know. Nothing. Okay. <laughs> Good question. Bone structure is a resonator. Human body is a beautifully built resonator. And the bone structure with calcium in it is, especially the skull, is intentionally designed to resonate a lot of things. So the brain, their gray matter, the neurons, produce the electric vibrations, oscillations, different waves. They create electromagnetic pulses in the brain, but those reflect all their skull and reflect back and create a wonderful resonator. And um, understand that symmetrical, symmetrical positions in Reiki are very powerful, especially because of bone resonation. And uh, standing in a beautiful dance meditation way of position or Stature is very powerful for powerful angelic resonations. So one of the parts of Galactic Reiki, which I teach you today, is invite angels to embody you. No, you embody the angel uh, to enter you in, into your body. And basically the angel angelic movements are, I know that from Angel Gahil, but basically these are... That's a moment, that these are the beings, that's a moment of protection, basically. You cover the 
person with the wings. That would be one of the most powerful. Also with the wings you can do that movement just with one wing or with two wings. And when you do that, the angelic energy comes. And cover with protection, basically. Important thing about angelic uh, Reiki is that it goes directly through God. It's, um, it's a prayer. They, their main way of doing things is through a prayer. So... Another thing is just just stand and um, provide energy like that. That's another angelic. Just invite angelic energy and bring it in. That's all. It feels absolutely divine. You bring the energy to the room. You saturate the whole room, whole area with angelic energy. You don't do anything. You know, your, your lo logic is turned off. You invite the angelic energy and invite the miracle, and, and that's about it. You pray, ask for a miracle, and that's all. Okay? Um, the bone structure. That's good enough for now. Um, other movements. Spinning different head chakras for stronger people, not for the vulnerable ones. Um, healing the eyes, obviously the people, especially the stronger ones, they have eyes over working. So you might move the darkness from the eyes, just remove the dark energy from the eyes and then put your, the hands like if you're on the other side you would put the hands like that put the hands over the eyes especially through the I take the sheet, the clean sheet, put them over the eyes so the nose kind of sticks out and breathes but but the clean sheet um, of fabric is is between my hands and the eyes and I would just put my hands on the eyes and I would feel like how the healing goes back and forth and the eyes are healed. The same thing with sinuses this time of the year in Northern Hemisphere. Okay. Um, yeah, the connection to the bone structures here and there, it's all wonderful. You, whatever is comfortable, you don't really have to go into a special position, whatever is good, but basically you want to connect as much to the bones and heal those sinuses and the jaws and the teeth and the gums through the bone structures. Uh, thyroid gland is here, so you might just ha have your hands over thyroid gland. The lymphatic vessels, which um, this, this joint is called TMJ, which so lymphatic vessels which supply the white cell immune cells to the TMJ are located here. So if you move your hand, you can know that where is a joint right here, right here. There is a joint, right. You can feel like a deep, like things are moving here. So the joint, so right under the joint, there is like a little deep, uh, yeah, how do you call them? There is a word for that. Uh, deep, deep space under the under the joint, and that's where lymphatic glands in. So, so you can work specifically on these lymphatic glands and invite more healing into that area. Okay, movements. So I would spin a little bit the chakras here and the chakras here for, for those who are stronger not for those who are, have headaches and stuff I wouldn't spin much uh, and the idea is just basically to to clean clarify purify that sort of thing so spinning now when you're not doing Reiki you just walk and uh, have your daily things I would I would practice move, move, moving the energy, and I would practice moving energy faster and slower, and go with the energy, and sending the energy, and taking the energy, and releasing the energy. So all these movements, understand that the the uh, rays of Reiki energy extend very far from the fingers. So 
So just doing a little bit of that is very interesting. You can feel how it moves around. You can feel, and again, there is symmetry and there is asymmetry. There is like all together, or you can kind of separate these three flows. It would be playing with three flows of energy or four flows of energy. Like, you see that? This finger kind of wants to go separate. So you become, you start playing with the energy not symmetrical, but a little bit of symmetrical. Okay? And one hand is very different from another. So my right hand is usually sending, and the left hand is usually sensing. So when I do the energy scan, I would go and play a little bit. So when you do something, it's kind of, it responds. And it depend, and that's, it's, it becomes much more sensitive. When it responds to you, you can feel more and right now I feel like the energy right here, so I can kind of map it in, in, in around the table. I create actually a, a little cloud of energy here. And I have that interesting tool. Actually, it will be fun for you to watch it. Hold on. It's on hand, but today the angels, I guess, hid it from me. Okay, so this is a ghost finder. A ghost finder. Uh, that's how it works. And usually, when the ghost is present, it goes to the red and blinks. And when you want to speak to the ghost, you ask uh, the ghost to blink the colors, and the ghost would blink the colors, and it would go like all the way to the red and blink. And if they're angry, it wouldn't even go down. Or if they're sort of, if they want to leave, they just go away and it goes back to the green. Right now, it's still not, not even blinking, right? Now oh, it's blinking. When I turn it to myself, it blinks better. But in any way, so I uh, in my Reiki room when I, when I where I worked a lot, there was always a cloud of energy which would uh, shine red and orange most of the time. It would, and it would move around, so you can kind of map it, and it would be like a cloud like that size, and it would go down, up, and if somebody came in, it would go under the bed in the corner and just hide there. So. That was uh, very tangible, very mappable. And uh, it was a friendly energy, and Jim kind of knew it, and uh, we discussed it. I don't think it was a human spirit. I think it was just kind of some sort of an energy vortex more than uh, con uh, it, it might have been conscious, but it wasn't hum humanly conscious. It was some, some other sort of energy. So it's, it's what I want to say. Yes, you create your reality. Yes, you project your vibrations. But from this practical perspective, when you do Reiki, you always feel that you send energies out, and you feel that something is also interacting with you. It's something comes and interacts with you. And there is a two-sided conversation. It's a dialogue between you sending something out and you receiving something. And sometimes it comes very powerfully. and. Um, like yesterday, I went to a Reiki share. It was I wasn't even in in very strong mood for for the meditation. But during the meditation, the waves of this very low vibration, like oh, very divine vibration, was just was just kind of coming to me and taking me. Like my mind would stop, and I would just bathe in that energy without thinking any much more. So that's um, there is much happening beyond beyond understanding. We just kind of have to trust it. Yeah, that's the idea. Trust and have faith that it will do the, the good. And that's again the answer and the idea. What what if something happens unexpected? Basically, trust. And again, you cannot solve all the problems for the patient. You try. You try to help. Sometimes it's unsolvable, and you just have to say, 
sometimes it's unsolvable. But I'm offering my healing, my intention is positive. I give you the idea of healing. I give you the idea of miracle. And it's very important just the very fact, even if I don't do anything, the very fact that you came here, laid on the bed, and I came here to provide the healing, that's your consent and I, my consent also to provide that healing. So that's a paradigm in which we are working. And that's, again, it's up to you to go as far as you wish in recovery. Any questions so far? All right. Next thing is, what do we do with lower chakras? With lower chakras, it's a very fine movement when you can kind of, I showed myself, I guess it's, yeah, like that. You sort of, um, I don't have a name for it. It's like playing basketball or dribbling. I think it's called dribbling. Dribbling a basketball or doing a CPU, I guess. CPU is called, right? Pulsing, yeah. Uh, be gentle with it, but basically you can kind of open more of the chakra if you want. If, if it's stuck and you really understand you want to open it, that would be one of the ways to open it. Okay? Mm. Another very powerful movement is that. You just kind of provide a shaking. Sometimes it becomes kind of chaotic, but if you get in tune with it, it becomes very, very coordinated. It looks exactly like uh, the hand, uh, shaking of the hands with, uh, with Alzheimer's. But for the healer, it has, I don't know, I, it could be related, it could be unrelated, but it's very powerful. It opens the energy flow. You lose a little bit the ability to feel it because the vibration kind of get distracts. You don't have as perfect of the understanding. But when you stop, you feel that the energy flow is better. Now, the next thing to improve the energy flow, if you really need to, and I usually have a pure understanding of when do I need to improve it, is the healing sounds. I think I did some of the sounds last time. Let's just go briefly through them again. So the most powerful sound for opening the energy flow in your hands and in the patient's chakra is snoring. And I just warn them, I will do traditional Chinese healing sounds, and it is basically snoring. I will snore in all possible ways to open your energy flows. And it goes like that. And you should get goosebumps right now because I do. Uh, that's um, that's how it works. Then uh, obviously there is um, the highest sounds which you can do, varying the uh, sound s and sh, and combining them together to get as high as you can. It's a very nice tuning sound to bring up the proper energy. Again, you. Experiment and feel which one feels really good. So it sounds like that. Now, there is that vibration which is also in your DNA. It's experimentally studied which is much slower, which is about one, two hertz. A hertz is a vibration per second. So, took, took, took. But you want to make it a sinusoid. So, it will be wow, 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 wow. And you can add the uh, whispering sound there, right? <laughs> And you can do the same thing with the no voice. 
it sounds funny, but it really worked great for me. Great for me. I I find it fun and um, productive to use the sounds to open things. So these are higher speech sounds. Then there is like that combined, and there is that. And you can play with higher and lower pitch as well because they can come in synchrony and discordance. Then there is that traditional Chinese sound, which is sounds like. It sounds very weird and very disturbing. So that is best for washing out things. It's basically to disturb the energy balance and the energy flow. Um, and there is that. It's a very mixed sound. Mm-hmm. And there is a few more sounds which I can't even reproduce right now. They come when you get into the proper state and then you... Basically, the whole Reiki becomes a meditation. You dance that meditation. Um, dance, meditation ritual and then the sounds come very naturally. Basically it's a way to channel uh, snake energy and some other higher energies which I don't have a name for them but I think they work pretty well. Now sometimes it helps to shake the bed and kind of usually the Reiki table is a little bit shaky so you just you can bump it a little bit so shaking the patient with the rhythm of your work is also a good idea. Um, sometimes, if they if they understand, especially for advanced advanced patients, um, tapping on the floor, clapping the hands. If you need to get the rhythm, clapping is actually shaking out a lot of energy. So if you want to kind of shake it out, that would be clapping. Uh, there are some musical instruments. I really love lower pitch, huge drums like that. That it's like gone, but it's just a drum on a on a on a ring. There is a work there on a wooden support, and the head, like you bomb it, and you kind of do it on the top of the of the patient, from the head, from the feet, and go around. I usually go three circles clockwise. It's more symbolic than practical, but that's I think it works well. Also, shaking their how do you call it percussions. Um, um, I don't know the name for that. Also, is 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 is, is fun. Um, oh, I also promised you the music. I will, I will post some of the music which which I use for my. Uh, it works well fine for me. Uh, any questions so far? Okay, next movement is moving the energy from the head to the bottom. Especially, it works with people who have heartburn. So you do it on yourself. You have to practice on yourself first. So you, Breathe in and then move the energy down. And do it a little slower, but basically that's a little moment. In, move the energy down. It helps with harder. It comes from Qigong and it's um, it's it's powerful. If you move it with the proper s- speed, it can help moving the energy from your top chakra to do- to the root chakra and, and to the earth. Um, the opposite movement would be more like an orgasmic energy movement. So you 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 should be careful with it. You might go back and forth, but don't want, don't overdo the upward movement because it's kind of it brings up too many things. You want usually want to move it down. Usually you want to move it down. So on the patient, it would like that. Either one hand or two hands intentionally just move things down, move things down. Just grab it again, move it down. Okay. Any questions so far? Is the intention of moving it down and to send it into the earth? Yes, and usually you would clear the blockages. If people have something moving up, like heartburn, or something when, when something is stuck, you kind of move it down and you clear the, the blockages in the energy flow. 
That's the intention, clearing the blockages. Thank you. Another thing is connecting two chakras together so there is two chakras, you can just move that. That's one of my favorites. Just move back and forth, connecting them together. The intention is to connect them together. Again, notice the hand is not like that, not flat. It's, it's very gentle, very gentle. And you have to feel the energy, feel it. Okay, next one, next one is brushing. Brushing. I love brushing. That's my favorite. That's what I would do very often, almost every time when I feel appropriate, like almost every other time. Brush and everything. It's it's almost that that infinity sign, but just just more relaxed. Not actually infinity. It's more like brushing back and forth. Imagine the rays of Reiki energy just kind of hitting everything and brushing everything. It's like restoring the connections, reintegrating everything. That's the idea. Reintegrating, um, wiping everything dark, bringing everything in, in proper balance. So I would do it on areas where they need kind of removing the dark things and bring them to the bottom. So it's it's the same as infinity sign, just all over the place. And sometimes I would just go away from the patient and do that elsewhere. It works even better because there is some something to it. You you go outside of the patient and there is some part of the miracle which I can't explain, just the way it I feel it's just sometimes it feels really good. Um, sometimes it's tough, it's tough, it's heavy to be near the patient, especially if the patient has this heavy energy. So working from the distance brings you into happy state, and you can still do your healing without being affected by their heaviness. All right. So I would sometimes I would step. I would put the patient here. I would step all the way and just serve the energy from the distance. In Chicago, we have a group of, how do you call it? Vortex healers, vortex healers. They just sit. But a patient is on a Reiki bed, and they just sit, and they meditate. That's all they do. And it works. It, it is just another modality. Speaking about modalities, um, I would say when you feel comfortable with your Reiki, Go and learn other things. Reiki is the door. It, you open the door to the healing, and then there is tons of things. There is traditional medicine, like not traditional, like modern medicine. How about modern traditional medicine? Uh, just you know, you have to know what thing, what is happening inside. All the immunology, brain things, brain waves. Google it. Wikipedia is wonderful. Don't listen to other people. Wikipedia is wonderful. It's a little bit conservative in terms of spirituality, but Still, it would mention things, and it's a good starting point. Other things are very confused or very mixed up. Wikipedia is a great starting point. And then YouTube is the second source. Just go and learn. There is a great series about Qigong on, on, on YouTube. Uh, check out Qigong. Qigong is a father mother of Reiki. Basically, Reiki is very simplified, westernized Qigong. So if you want to learn Reiki deeper, Qigong is one of the obvious paths. It originated, uh, Mikao Sui was uh, a practitioner of Qigong. So, so um, it was built on the basis of Qigong. And Qigong is much more sophisticated and deep than, than Reiki. Reiki is simplified, purified, so you, everybody can learn it. But then Qigong and Tibetan medicine require like lifelong study master-student relationship, and it's a secret art which only now comes out again through the West. Some teachers come here and teach. Uh, yoga is another thing. You have to experience yoga. You have to just do it as much as you can, especially if you're not as flexible, like I'm not flexible, but just being in the room, do intending the movements without, instead of doing them, slack your movements, but still do it a little bit and kind of experience that, and uh, it works great. Um, acupuncture is wonderful. It's also it's uh, brother sister of Reiki. The same uh, same energies are moving, and the uh, needles use uh, use these antennas for this energy. Um, herbal medicines, traditional Chinese herbal medicine is great. Uh, Ayurvedic medicine, bring them into your practice. It's it's 
absolutely needed complement for the Reiki. Their herbal medicine brings the same vibration just symbolized in the herb and it's natural and it has that vibration so when you take it in uh, it's just another way of getting the same vibration, same tune up, same upgrade. Um, stones and crystals just go hand, hand to hand with, with Reiki. Obviously these are permission slips so take it easy, you don't have to buy $50 crystal, you can find a crystal on the road and we use it just as well. You charge it with your own energy and it will work just as well. Of course when I get to the crystal shop I would take every crystal possible and that would be my test. I would send the energy and feel how it feels, you feel does it feel sharp or blunt or heavy or light, happy or unhappy and I would establish relationship with crystals and obviously bigger crystals are usually way more powerful. Um, all right, Reiki movements. Max, yes. Yes. Max. Um, when you were showing about using your hand between the chakras, is that a galactic way to do it or a Qigong way or your way? It's, uh, I would say it's my way based on Qigong, my way based on Qigong, but I had it even before I started Reiki, I had it before. I realized I play with energies all my life. Okay. So, but I found it in Qigong and then it kind of came into Reiki, oh yeah, I can do that. So it's Yeah, I've never seen that, because I just tend to like hold, but I've never thought to move between. Can you show me with your hand again? This one? Or this one. Oh, where you're connecting chakra to chakra. Oh, chakras. Okay. Hold on, hold on. I lost it. <laughs> I started thinking about it. I lost it. I'm sorry. I'm confused. Okay. Scroll it back. I, 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 I will All show right. it right. I will. Thanks. Yeah, like that. You kind of just have a sand in your hand and just move it back and forth, making it smoother. Sand. Yeah, imagine sand. Yeah, that's sand. Yeah, sand. Yeah. Okay. What I want. Um, galactic. Okay, galactic movement. Uh, what Jim is doing, what the Kerr is doing, I got it from the Kerr. That's classical Lyrian Reiki. Okay, you invite Lyrian energy, obviously. You have to channel it. You can't really <laughs> do it without channeling. You have to be, I imagine myself to be a, what's the name, yeah, Worf, Worf from the Star Trek, yeah, clean on, clean on from Star Trek, very powerful, very uh, proud, I know, uh, the patient is in front of me and I want to breathe the magic. I would usually go through heart chakra or solar plexus chakra or one hand on heart and one on solar plexus. And you do like that. Oof. 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 That's about how you do neuron reiki in a very emotional way. Basically after that I get lots of emotional flow and it's very energetic. Mm. Uh, Yael would be more like connecting different points, actually pressing pretty hard on different points. Uh, learn, yeah, acupressure, learn acupressure. I will reference you the book. At some, some point I bought tons of these copies they're pretty cheap on Amazon and I give them to my friends and Reiki healers and to the patients acupressure book with all the pictures where to press, where to press all the spots. Okay, so learn them, Jim using a lot of them so use them too. It's, um, it's not only permission slip, it is it has a very simplistic mechanism. Basically, you connect to the brain, and it's like acupuncture. You connect to the brain, and the brain that is where things come close together, things which control sinuses 
activated through pressing on these parts of the body. So it has energetic component and it has also the neurophysiological component, which come hand in hand. All right, I ran out of breath after Liran Reiki. Uh, what's your questions and comments so far? <laughs> I just want to say thank you so much because this has yeah, just well. been a wonderful learning experience for me and um, no. I can see where this is going to really help so much, so many people. So thank you. You're welcome. All right, so just focusing again on that vibration. So you can hold it in the air and that works interesting. It's just kind of another energy flow. And you can vibrate high speed, you can vibrate slow speed. It's pretty interesting. Um, another vibration I learned it from my, uh, I'll show you, like, my uh, other healer, she does it all the time. Actually, Barbara, yeah, more many healers do it all the time. Just send it like that. And uh, don't get crazy on being tight. It kind of has to go easy, not from just, it's relaxed vibration. It's kind of, you send it with a smile, relaxed vibration. I don't know what it does, how it does, but it does something new, something healing, smooth. It opens things. It helps the flow. Of, I don't think it's even liquid flow. It's something else. It's energy flow. Yeah. Uh, obviously, I showed you their sur surgery last time, the psychic surgery. So you first you kind of warm it up then you kind of shake it a little then you take out their junk and throw it away just shake it out then you maybe again you just smoothen a little and then send the heal and then you work on it to heal it just to put put their the healing energy that's about it okay i saw in our group, there was something very weird. They kind of push, one person push, pushes the energy from the top and second takes it out from under the bench and kind of pulls it out. So that, that pulling out as a strain of energy, I saw many times in different uh, modalities. I think it makes a lot of, a lot of uh, sense. I think there is something to it which is very native to the, the way their dark energy works. You really can pull dark energy strings, right? And then kind of throw it. Don't make sure, make sure don't take anything <laughs> good from from the body. All right. Um, and then again, you heal. You intend to put good things back, and you just bring. Yeah, I do a lot of stuff. Like a lot of times, I do from different chakras. I will bring to one place. So like. For the heart, I would take it from root chakra and from the crown chakra and bring it to the heart. Gradually, gently, like that. Oh, yeah. One of the movements I do, it's more like position. Like that. It symbolizes that I take the energy from the sky and I put it down to the body. And same thing like that, from the place to the earth. And I, when I ground, ground, I just have to, okay, I'll just show like that. I would uh, ground by my hands, also by my feet. I tend the energy to ground to the, to the, to the ground. All right, what else is there? Um, <laughs> there is tons more, I just, you know, have to stop at some point. I think it's enough for Reiki 2. For Reiki 2, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the study the systems of the body. Lymphatic is wonderful. It's it's magic. It has its own idea, flow. There is a whole kind of analog of Reiki is just based on lymphatics. Um, yeah, lymphatic is interesting. White blood, lots of, yes? Did you say the name of that book that um, had the acupressure things in it? Where is it? I forgot. 
Um, I will just send it out after. I promised you many things. I promised you the <laughs> okay, that's <laughs> insurance link, Reiki insurance. I promised you the Reiki. Uh, uh, William Rand on Reiki. Yeah, let's switch to a new topic. If I remember something else, I will bring it up. But basically, I uh, will send you, I wrote it down, book on acupuncture pressure, the, the reference, uh, Reiki music. And then we switch to the last part of the conversation, the like next 24 minutes, about the business part of it. So I will send you a link for Reiki Insurance. And William Rand wrote a nice um, chapter on um, Reiki, its official recognition. Understand that it's double-sided <laughs> in and yang sword or something. The more it becomes official, the more it becomes monopolized and regulated by the government. The less it's uh, regulated, the uh, more it is free to do the right thing. And somehow it is so much guided by the spirit that we stay away from a lot of government regulation and people just become initiated and do wonderful things. The whole community right now, I think, is in a very happy state. Um, you know, I meet Reiki people, most of them are very positive and do the right thing. Everyone is doing it in a different manner, but it's all very spiritual, very, very positive. And I also will send you my disclaimer form. I usually don't use it unless I'm required to, but basically it's the client has to sign that it is a pure magic. I treat it, I treat, uh, do the healing with... Um, spiritual energy and uh, medical complaints are not applied. There is no warranty, no diagnosis, no medical diagnosis is done. It's all very spiritual. Uh, and the idea is that we, we, we are mostly covered by freedom of religion more than any other ways. It's more like psychic work, freedom of religion work, spirit work. It's on, on the side of miracles. Okay, um, any questions so far? All right, thank you. So there are things I wanted to continue about organizing your business. Uh, first thing is, uh, I didn't mention the meetups. Meetups is a wonderful tool for organizing your, for promoting your business. Obviously, you do a lot of things for free, and now I understand it is the future. Basically, in the future, everybody will be doing everything for free. Right now, you're in the middle. You still do a lot of things for free, especially in America. People are used to freebies, but your business starts spinning, and then you get you get paid when things when the wheels are spinning properly. But you start for free, and then you kind of convert it to a paid version. Uh, so meetup.com, you have your first, I don't remember, month or week or something for free. I don't remember, actually. But then you pay about, I think, $60 per half a year for, for your group. And also, two additional groups are included, so you can start three groups. And usually people don't, cannot run that many groups at the same time, so you have extras. And then if your group becomes more than, uh, gets more than 50 members, then you have to pay $90 per half a year. So a year it's $180. That's how much I pay for my uh, three groups. And I use them well. I, uh, I have one group for Reiki, one group for um, Russian meetups, and one group for family meetups. And understand that penetrating any market, especially you know, any market, especially the established one, especially in old places like Rochester was a very established, very static, very conservative in terms of business, business-wise business, business -wise conservative place. It didn't, not many new businesses were started there. It's all old people going through old ways. So then there were established practitioners. It was really hard to penetrate that market, right? And uh, in you have an option to join traditional routes or create your own one. 
And meetup.com is a perfect way to create your own community, your own route, your own followers, your own people. And it's because you provide it for free, there is no demands. You basically no responsibility no not much of responsibility there. You you do whatever you like in a way in a t you define I have to pronounce it very it's important. You define your timing, you define what you do and when you do. You define as a business owner, as a practitioner, as a human with divine will, you define your timing. You tell people when it's convenient to you think for you to do things. Uh, my good friend who is doing a lot of healing and a lot of very popular, a lot of traveling, a lot of public uh, broadcasts. Lucia Dashkevich, she does it mostly in Russian these days. Uh, she cancels about 50% of her commitments, usually in advance, like a few days in advance. But she would commit to things and then she would cancel it just because it doesn't feel right. And she feels absolutely good about it, no problem whatsoever. Obviously, if it is more money, more money were involved, she would possibly do less of cancellation. But again, it's it's up to you how much to carry on you, and it's your responsibility to, to cancel things when uh, things are not flowing well, when you are sick, and so on. You are responsible for your well-being, first of all. So meetups is a wonderful tool. You announce a meetup, decorate it with nice pictures. It takes a little bit of work to decorate it with nice pictures, but it's not as difficult. It's all pretty simple. You can take pictures because it's free for, for the users. You don't sell anything there. You can borrow pictures. There is no not much, uh, because you're providing it for free, there is not much uh, copyright violation there. And um, just make, make a nice description. And here it's uh, very important, again, very important rule is that's what Bashar teaches. Don't say, I'm trying to establish. Say, I'm a healer, I'm providing healing. Or I'm a healer, I heal people. At, at the worst, say, I don't know, at the limit, say, I am developing my practice. Or I'm expanding my practice. I'm building my practice. I'm building my clientele. How many clients do you have? I have one client. Smile. You are at that stage. Nothing to be ashamed of. You are a beginning practitioner, nothing to be ashamed of. I am starting my business. I have one client once a month or something, whatever, at random. But I am building my clientele. I'm establishing my clientele. I went through that. I felt, went through the state of shame. Oh, I'm taking somebody's, I'm asking for some favors. I'm taking somebody's market. Don't be ashamed. You're offering a wonderful service. You are guided. You um you have the right to do that. You authorized. And then you st you start their group, and the well, people start coming. Especially like you started today, next day they announce it, or two days later they announce it. And if it's already decorated well, people start signing up. And then about a week you get about seven people, and about a month you get about twelve people, and in six months you get about fifty people. In a year, you get about 100 people. Uh, obviously, if it is a dead uh, uh, meetup, dead group, which never has uh, meetings, then people, it's all fictional. But, but then you announce meetings, maybe after you get about seven people, especially if you have a partner or a friend who can be there with you. So if you can meet anyway, then you bring people to, alone. And you meet together, and you do Reiki share. You do lectures, you do free healings, you do meditation circle, watch videos. I started from watching videos. I just was showing people Bashar, and we discussed things. Um, there is a lot of variety of things. And then you go to meetups of others and meet other people. And usually these are free or voluntary donations, so it's, it's a wonderful tool. And then from there, you meet other practitioners, and you you find your clientele, you provide them free services, you provide them discounts. It's completely honest to provide discounts. Say, I will give you a discount, you know. And, um, 
and then you can you have a, a list of people to send your messages to, so you can just offer once once in a while you can send. Uh, I'm available and uh, I take appointments. All right. So that's first tool. Now, uh, don't waste your money. So now about the money. Uh, website. If you really want to create a website, there is WordPress.com where you get free website, and there are several other sites where you can get a free website. You don't have to pay, even for development. It's all click, 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 name it, describe it, bring some pictures, borrow some pictures from internet, just search for Reiki, for Reiki, and you will find wonderful pictures or light workers or chakras. Describe, don't make it too official, too harsh, too formal, I would suggest. Just do it to the level where you are now. And as you grow, you can upgrade it. Uh, the only expense is when you asked for by, you know, if you rent a space in the office, then you would ask, be asked for uh, rate insurance. That's $90 per year or so, maybe $100 per year. That's an expense. Uh, business cards you can get for ten dollars plus shipping, or for seven dollars plus shipping. So it's up, it's like fifteen dollars or twenty dollars. You can get business cards from uh, Vista Print. Vista Print. Walmart is also a good um, business card. Don't make too small letters because if your clients are going to be old people, they won't be able to read small letters. Make them big. So you have to balance between. Uh, Modern design, we have lots of empty space and usability where you really have, they need to be able to read your name and your telephone number. And I really recommend to put your photograph there. Uh, oh, yeah, I can share with you my template for a business cards. Uh, my friend went to Extreme and um, on her business card, it's foldable. And she would cut a window, and that window would open, and you would see something beautiful after you open the window in this business card. That's fine too. You can get creative or handwritten. Um, so the rental of space. So if you have a place at home which you can decorate for Reiki, that's wonderful. It, it's not very difficult to decorate a Reiki space. Just candles, printouts on the wall, uh, nice, clean, everything. You can like. I used to put my, my we, we sleep on my on uh, queen matrix, so we would just put it up. I would tie it to the wall, so like I would screw the thing to the wall, tie it to the wall so it stands there, door doesn't fall. And I would put a clean, it's not a blanket kind of a cover, clean fabric cover on it so it looks not as ugly. And uh, and I had a just sleeping room for, for a Reiki room. And then there was access from the backyard, so I would put on my gate, I would put, uh, you know, sessions come here and an and arrow, and most of the people won't pay attention. But in any case, I would put their invitation signs, so they would come from the backyard, come to the sleeping room, and I would do the sessions there. You would have a um, nice curtain, so it's not too bright in the sunlight, uh, music, uh, candles, maybe a little bit of incense, depending on the people. I really love incense, so so I would do incense and, uh, and your Reiki table. And I, with my first table, I just made from from wood, just kind of it is roughly made, um, just screwing pieces of wood together. But again, I bought two tables at different times on Craigslist for fifty dollars each. Usually, it's easier to find for seventy-five and a hundred. It's pretty easy. Like many ta new tables cost a hundred, so used ones would be a new one two hundred, and then a discount two hundred, and you buy a pretty good Reiki table. And that's about it. So these are expenses. Um, remind me, are there any other expenses? So the, for renting their space in the office, the, some of the offices ask for upfront fee or upfront payment subscription. And it's really, really tough because you don't really know how many people you would get. And usually you overestimate how many people you get. I, initially, I would, would be getting like once per two weeks or something. Paid, paid patients, so it wasn't practical to do their uh, upfront payment. So I went through all the offices around. That was very educational. And Chicago is big on yoga and chiropractors, so it was easy to find offices. So I would use Google Maps. Um, 
and bicycle around and um, many of them would be just open to render space and some of them would render space without upfront fee. One place is very friendly, they they gave me a good price, I think it was $20 per reservation, flexible reservation times. They gave me the key, they, did, they didn't do it in an instruction, it was just like, oh, here's the key, go ahead and tell us when you want to reserve a play time and you just come and uh, bring a bring patient. Uh, other office, there was a lot of paperwork and uh, the price was 25 per visit. Other office was, a monthly fee was 125 per month plus, no, I think it was 125 per month, but you had to reserve specific days, like it was one evening per, per week or one morning per week. And I had to discuss with them what is the most popular time because I didn't really know what people in Chicago would they come during workday, during lunch, and so on during weekend. So uh, you know, different places have different locations would have different preferences for different people. So at the end, I think I reserved Wednesday, Wednesday evening, and it worked okay. Friday, evening, by some reason, there is so many activities. I think it's not a good time. And uh, in uh, in Rochester, like Sunday morning was at that time because everybody went to to church, or at least more many people went to church. So, no, there was uh, very little activity. But it would really depend on the location. Um. So at the end, I think I had offers from five places, and I just ended up reserving, having agreements with three places, so I could choose where I uh, arrange my. My, my patient to come in one or three places and each of them was like within 10 minute bicycle ride. So I would come, set up the things and uh, and would uh, have a session and then go home. And you know, once in a while I would have two sessions uh, side by side but you know, I would give a little, a little caution so they wouldn't kind of interfere. All right, and, and that's in, in Chicago, because in Chicago it's kind of more of the city and people are not as comfortable coming to the houses. In Rochester and suburbs, I think it's just perfect to invite people to the house and Jim has no problem. People trust him, people come to him, ride to his place. And also he took um, invitations, so he would ride around to many locations. So he would be on the, on the road or booked all the time for last many, several years. and. Um, even if there was no paid, he would still go to to free, uh, just provide it to friends for free. And I would use a lot of his free healing and other, other people as well. And he would always um, throw in a, a channeling into that. All right. Uh, so income. So, uh, you know, suppose you get, say, a $40 per per patient and uh, that would be like two, three patients per day, That then it becomes, and just multiply how many days you get, so it's it becomes kind of reasonable after a while. But you need to get those patients in, you need to kind of establish that, that flow. So basically you start converting people. Uh, it's, you know, if a person already is into Reiki, it's um, less likely that they wouldn't have already a Reiki healer, but you can convert our new people into Reiki and um, a typical conversation would be like, what are you doing? I'm a Reiki healer. And then what you would throw back, do you know what Reiki is? And uh, they say, yes, I do. And then they would say, yeah, blah, blah. How do you find it out? And, and um, if the person doesn't know what it is or is interested to learn more, you would say that um, it's an ancient Asian art and um, it came to the West and it uses, uh, you use hands to send healing energy and it helps with restoring the balance and with headaches and things of that sort. Um, and then uh, you studied it, your level two Reiki practitioner, then your session looks like that, either you practice in the office or in a, at your home, and then um, you have a f uh, appointments, it will last about, First appointment lasts about one and a half hours, and then it's about 45 minutes after that. You can give discounts and that, and that, that sort of thing. And uh, you know, one out of many times it would actually click, and you would get basically a sale. A, a person would reserve the, an appointment and so on. 
I would also go to events and offer it in the, at the events. And that would be a table at the event, and I would uh, have a sign-up sheet. That's uh, I will send you the form for sign-up sheet. But basically, every 20 minutes, actually every 20 minutes, you would have a time slot, and you would they could sign up for the treatment, and you would provide free treatments. At the end of the treatment, you would give a card and say that you know. They give, they, you can give them also coupons. People love coupons and give, give them a coupon saying that I will give you a discount if you come, blah, blah, blah. And, um, and that's how you also get some, some of the patients. And then the word of mouth is most most popular. Also, you can print out your little uh, printouts and p place them in different locations or stick them on the walls. I love to, love to give talks, so if you if you are capable of giving talk, I would prepare a talk and just give talks in different locations, just schedule it. Some of my talks were pretty well attended, so you would, but you never know, I guess, for some, I mean, usually people come anyway, so, so for some of the talks they have to sign up, for some of the talks I didn't even ask for sign up. I think it was much easier not to ask for sign up. So with, for the talks I would use a library, usually in library, they, in many libraries they provide, um, for locals they provide uh, rooms, so that would be an option. I, th I think also you could organize, I mentioned meetups. So a library is a good option for a Reiki meetup. So you would have to bring your Reiki bed and also Reiki share can be done on, 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 on chairs as well. Uh, also, uh, po some people are good uh, leaders and some people are good followers. So if you're not, uh, not confident that you can do it yourself, uh, find partners. Find partners. Uh, actively network with other Reiki practitioners. Find friends and partners and organize a business together. So basically, an office, a Reiki office, I guess it can, for a small office to be efficient, it has to have about 20 practitioners. So maybe somewhere between four and 20 practitioners. It really depends how well are they committed. But as far as I can tell, many commonly managed Reiki places, they have many, many practitioners kind of sharing the space. And again, I mean, first time the client comes to your office and then second time it's because they already understand they come to your home and then they don't have to pay the rent for the, for the office. Um, barter, I would, I use a lot of barter and barter works great, especially because I can do a lot of other things like taking interviews, uh, fixing computers, uh, creating websites, doing business cards, creating graphics, writing papers for the others, like about Reiki, about their businesses. So I lo use a lot of barter. Uh, just Reiki exchange is fine. You can offer to other practitioners that you can do Reiki on them and uh, they can do Reiki on you. And uh, volunteering is great. So volunteer somewhere and learn from them their marketing skills. How they invite patients, how they, just ask them, how do they get build their clientele? So uh, calculating how many return and recurring patients do you have to have to, to keep your business running? Just calculate for yourself. Uh, I know my friend, she has about 300 people, which is, I think is a little overkill, but yeah, sure, it works fine for her. She has like monthly patients and they just you know weekly patients, couple monthly, just random patients, but she knows everybody by, you know, by name and she keep, keeps them all connected and she, uh, she keeps connected to them and sends the, the newsletters. Last thing is, uh, it works really well saying that I have time, do you want to have a Reiki? So, mm, if you already have patients who haven't called, it's completely fine to send uh, uh, an email or an SMS saying, I have time next week, do you want to do you want a rake? Because it's it's a service you provide, it's always nice. You will have a positive response on that. And especially if you give a good discount or free Reiki that, you know, you will get people coming through. So start from free, offer your friends and uh, random acquaintances free Reiki. And when they come, uh, the things start rolling and then you will get more and you'll get them them pay.
I think I covered all things on my list, actually. Max, um, yes. for payment, how do you normally take that? How much? Or no. how do I take it? The form? Uh, yeah. Is it cash? Is it? Yeah, usually people pay cash to me. Uh, my other friend, uh, she is way more formalized, but um, for her to be formalized, actually she does not Reiki, she is a massage therapist, so it's way more official. Um, way more official. And she does, um, she loves um, Chase Quick Pay. And often her, she offers, if you pay, prepay now, I give you, dis give you discount. So that works actually really well. When, you, when people prepay, there is so much less of no-shows. Uh, in Reiki, in general, you have little no-shows. But uh, if there is prepayment, it's much even better. You can have prepay with flexible date. You, they, they still have a discount, and then, and then, um, mm, and then they schedule whenever. Um, Chase uh, Quick Pay, cash, uh, PayPal offers now free swiping card swiping service. Actually, it's free, no upfront fee, but they charge I think about five percent from from the first wife. But I think it might work for some people. OK. Checks are fine, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm very re relaxed about that. I'm very relaxed. Some people are much more structured. But you know, that for one of my uh, friends, friend practitioners, really well works. She gives, uh, she gives a discount for future three Sign, sign, signing up for, for future three sessions gives a discount. It also works fine for, for her. I'm not I'm sure thinking, if she takes the prepay or not. I'm doesn't. thinking to get like um, new clients would be similar to what I do with the code thing, um, where like if you bring a friend in, then you know you're going to get a discount, and they can get like some a discount uh -huh. too, uh -huh. so double discount kind of thing. Uh huh. So that for me. I think that's a really good way to do it. Or if you bring a friend, yours is free, um, theirs is free that time, and then you probably get another client out of that too. Uh -huh. All right, any more questions before we wrap up? Let me see, are there any questions on Skype? No, nothing. All right. I will do a, a blessing and a joint attunement, not one by one, but I will uh, attune everyone at once. Smile. Start your session and end your session with a smile. See the bright side. Intend for the miracle to happen. Always see the bright side. Always see the opportunity for the miracle. Be that miracle. Carry that miracle. Embody that miracle. You are Reiki now. You are attuned. You are light workers, Reiki workers who bring the light into the world. Consciously shift back and forth, back and forth, connecting unconnectable, connecting unconnectable. Stay in joy because that's the only only emotion, only state which is very healing. <laughs> Not only, but one of the most healing states. Smile with grace. Smile with gratitude. Smile because you are the Reiki energy, and the Reiki energy is joy and happiness. Smile because you are the creator, and the creator smiles. I bless Reiki healers in you. 
I bless your courage, your bravery, your gratitude, your loving energy, your gardening energy, your nurturing energy. You and I bless your feminine energy of nurturing, and I bless your masculine energy of seeding light, seeding the light everywhere, seeding the health everywhere, seeding intentionally, putting forward your vibration and your light everywhere, shining the light and creating more harmony in the world. I will impress on you the symbols three symbols of Reiki again, and I bless you as the new carriers of those symbols. Now, carry that light gently, carefully. Carry it as a flame, as a little flame, and take care of it. Nurture it. Let it grow. Protect it until it grows bigger. Feed it with good intentions. Feed it with your attention with it with the opportunities to grow and to practice. Apply it creatively. Apply it gracefully. Apply it harmoniously. And connect to other sources of light, to other mirrors of light, to other carriers of light. You would better do it together. Be connected. Stay connected. I bless your unity with others. I bless your harmony with yourself and unity with others. We are one now. We are the Reiki energy. We are the carriers of light. We are the creator at work. Bless you all. Thank you much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for becoming part of this something which is bigger than each of us, something which is greater something which is divine and full of grace. Grace and peace be with you. Amen. Thank you so much. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Max. Thank you. Thanks, Max. Right. Thank you, Max. Thank you, Max. Thank you, everybody. I'll stop the broadcast now. And our viewers, goodbye. And goodbye, people on Skype.